Okay. Busan. London was shocking to Busan when they played previously. God's gonna play Sombra. So last time they played DPS composition against uh, Justice when they were playing Ryan Goats. So what do they play here? Sombra Winston Goats. No, just Winston Goats. Okay. I don't think this is the best idea, but okay. See how they play this? Yo, happy Pancake Tuesday. I've eaten so many pancakes over the last week. Trying to isolate Raw. Mm, quite a bit of damage, but they don't manage to find anybody. Trying to play aggressive. Profit dies instantly. Okay. Well, that's uh, predictable. Holy Raw, what are you doing, dude? My god. Did he find a pin on Profit? He must have done, mustn't he? Must have just been Raw uh, Void that got the credit for it. Void actually did so much damage. Did he boop someone off? Hello, Nathan Walker. Time to pause oversight. Yes, I saw that my my birthplace. I don't think my birthplace has leaked. Why would my birthplace have leaked? Wait, what? My birthplace? What are you talking about carbonated coffee? I mean, my birthplace is on my passport and stuff. Shrove Tuesday. My mum, <laughs> my mum's womb. Hello, Haga Haga. Just watched my reaction to the Shang Nine. Yeah, boy. That was, that was, uh, that was a thing, wasn't it? Hello, doors. Tolu five one or fifteen twelve, etc. Hello, people. Okay, so back to the Ryan goats, or rather, to Ryan goats for the first time this series. Ah, okay. Much fun to pick on profit again. To K out, putting a huge amount of damage. The synergy there with the bubble wasn't great. Raw didn't really go aggressive at the right time, but Decay is still doing huge amounts of damage. Sound check, thank you. Six months, tier one sub. Half a year of Sideshow Overwatch. I'm doing pretty well in Visa Hell, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I like my parents' house area. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. But I wasn't born in this town, so I thought I'd leaked both. Gesture takes a lot of damage on the approach. Gets blocked, but Discord orbs on him. Profit not there with the uh, with the bubble to cleanse. So, so okay. So far, so bad from London. Honestly, I wouldn't say that Gladiators have been playing particularly well, but London not looking great. What am I planning on reviewing today? Uh, maybe I should put this somewhere on the screen. But these are the games that I'm planning to review today. Uh, so Gladiators versus London, Spark against Gladiators, Toronto against NYXL, Boston against Toronto, and then Mayhem against Houston. Uh, I should probably put them on the screen somewhere, shouldn't I? Or I'll make a command that says schedule. Is there a schedule command at the moment? No. Okay, cool. Add com schedule. Uh, Gladiators versus London. Spark versus Gladiators. Toronto versus... I know, def underscore NYXL really messed with me when I was looking for this as well. I don't normally call it def. I don't know why I called it def then. I think of them as the Tor uh, Toronto theme. I don't know why I did this. Please forgive me. Spark versus Gladiators. Toronto versus NYXL. Boston versus Toronto. And Florida Mayhem. I don't really have a good thing for Florida Mayhem either. I normally think of them as... I don't know. Normally think of them as Florida, but what's a three-letter code for Florida? There isn't really a good one. So I end up making them FLM, which I sometimes mix up for F FML, which makes sense, because fuck up my life if you're on the Florida Mayhem, you know what I mean? FLA, of course. FLA. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right.
Alright, let's, uh, let's get cracking. So, not so great for London so far. But they do have a butt ton of ultimates to be able to use. But so do gladiators. Honestly, if gladiators just save their grav, and then use supports to sustain, they should- Oh, okay, they grab first. So they get grabbed second, bombs come in. Fair enough. Fair enough. London not able to do anything. London not playing well. And you're telling me London won this game? Gladiators must have started playing a lot worse. Alright, well, London looking like they're totally lost in that game. Or in that round. What games am I doing today? If you type exclamation mark schedule, you'll be able to see. Okay. So London choose not to run a DPS composition, but they lose anyway. That's not entirely unsurprising, but... My mods will d almost definitely fuck the command, that's true. That's absolutely true. 18 hours late. What do you mean 18 hours late? This, oh, you mean to watch the games? Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully I'll catch up with them and I'll be able to watch everything else live this week. I right, bit of broken and prod in. Aggression coming out from gesture. He took the bubble. His own bubble was used. 23%. Uh, God. God is definitely punishable, but they just push him out. God is still half health. Uh, the Ryan shield is such a better resource. God went for a bash there, but it doesn't work out. Gesture weak. Can Void punish? Oh, well, they split off God, so God's definitely going to die here. Yeah. Just just finding it difficult to be able to dive them. Decay individually absolutely pounding at the moment. Right. Righty tighty. What do you want to do now? Throwing a couple of right clicks in. Ooh, bashed on gesture. He's definitely going to die. Yeah. London look really uncomfortable. Like, gesture looks very uncomfortable in a lot of these fights. Like, he doesn't really n know what how to play aggressive. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, so far, London look as lost as ever. So, I'm not really sure how they won both of their games this week. From what I've seen on Busan. But let's see. Teams that are bad at control in this uh, meta seem to indicate to me that they just don't understand aggression enough. You know, like they really struggle to be able to generate an advantage in the default Ryan v Ryan. Gesture just goes aggressive with the bubbles. Hydration gets caught. They go for the pin. Okay. Grav goes out afterwards. Secondary grav. Oh, that's a late bomb. Huh? The bomb was nearly okay. God weak, but... Gladiators with de decent focus fire so far. Alright, well, Gladiators invested all of their ultimates and ended up losing the fight, but... So did London. Actually, Prophet managed to generate a huge amount of ult charge during that fight. Decay had a later grav, so they've both had a roughly similar building rate, but... Prophet is a lot closer. Good evening, Joshua Outlaw. <laughs> Have I done power rankings yet? No, I'm waiting until I watch all of the games to do power rankings. I'll probably do it on Wednesday evening. Wow, JS41637. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Grab on the wall. That's nice. It's earlier by a long way than Decay's. They're going to be able to win that fight just off the back of it. All right. Nice. Nice stuff. But now Decay has his grab. Having said that, uh, you know, Shaz was almost able to get his trance at the same time as Prophet was able to get his. But Bedoshin's definitely going to be able to get trance at the same time as Decay has his. So it's not going to be a one fight in the same way that Prophet's was. Prophet just had a basically a free grab there because he was able to build it so quickly. Uh, really nice individual play from Prophet. 
So, gladiators will just want to try and force a dry fight here. Maybe with their rally. Like, rally in, trade transcendences, then grav. Something like this. Gestures found it. Oh, Decay took a huge amount of damage there. Why are they going aggressive when they're weak? Ooh, Transcendence is used. Decay uses. Get the pick on guard. Nice bash. It's a bash bomb combo as well from uh, Hydration and Void. Oh, is Fury really going to clutch this? I mean. It's not just Fury, but the fact that Prophet caught up there in terms of his grab is bananas. Oh, there's no way that London should have won that. Jesus, what a clutch from Prophet and Fury. And how did they... All right, I'm not going to really go back and rewatch many things, but, but look at this. So Gladiators get off a much better engagement here, but Prophet has caught up to Decay, really, in terms of his grab. Despite the fact he's used two grabs. Okay, catches them all. There's basically nobody alive. There's only three people alive. It's a 3v6 fight. And they go for a grav bomb. How does this bomb kill anyone? Why is Raw not shielding the right way? Why is Raw shielding Prophet, who's miles away, and not the bomb? And it allows the boop to go through as well. Why is Hydration also shielding that way? Why do they think the bomb's over there? I mean, unlucky that Hydration dies, honestly, but... Well, super strange. Okay. What an odd round. I think Prophet played really well to be able to get his grab up so quickly, but... Honestly, apart from that and Fury's clutch... Uh, London didn't do too much else that was really good. What do I think of Souls? Are Souls pickups legit? Are they rumored pickups or are they... What do you call it? Yeah, he must have lost track of it. Raw has not been playing well as well. Yeah, I would agree. I think Raw has not been playing great on main tank. Okay. J having said that, Gesture... Just looks like he has to go aggro, otherwise he doesn't know what he's doing on Ryan. He no, to be fair, that that's a little bit of a mischaracterization because he can just play passive. It's just that he doesn't have the the subtleties of a lot of other people. Like he's either passive or really aggressive, and he doesn't really have that in between. Like he doesn't change gears very very easily. Actually, the walls are predictable, but I think it's something like 11 seconds. Found an off-angle there, Gesture. I don't know why they allowed Gesture to take such an off-angle. Well, okay. The, I, I have a feeling this is going to be a really weird game, because both of these guys aren't great Ryans. Elissa and Hailey? Oh, they are officially confirmed. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about Hailey and Illicit. Um, I thought Illicit played Zarya. Thank you, Swag Solidarity on Twitch Prime. Um, when, I saw, uh, when I saw people talking about it on... What do you call it? Uh, no, you're right, you're right. They were saying that he was a replacement for Fletter because he was a projectile DPS, but, um, Soul, most teams play with their projectile DPS on Brig and their hitscan DPS on Zarya, but Soul actually do it the other way around, where they have Fletter, who's their projectile DPS, but he plays Zarya, you know what I mean. Uh, but also Fletter can play Brig, I mean, he played Brig at the World Cup, so... The backdrop is definitely not different, Joel Robin. I didn't clean my room either. I, it, the room is actually messier than normal. Why get a Zen if you have Jay Hong pr playing pretty damn well? Uh, well, I would say Jay Hong has been playing pretty well this season, but last season he didn't look very good, so it's very possible that um, he could still drop off in a different meta. Yep, I still get paid.
So, uh, I don't really have very strong opinions on Alyssa O'Hiley. Uh, I'll probably go back and look through some of their contenders' votes when I have free time. Maybe next week or something. Did you see that Hayes said Fraggy is performing well right now? Nope, I didn't. Where did he say that? Maybe they're trying him in scrims or something. Thank you, Baker Browse, with Twitch Prime as well. I'm not drinking out of a cardboard tube. No, it's a Blizzard, Blizzard Arena uh, thingy, thingy, thingy. Blizzard Arena, what's it called? Drinking vessel. What are these called? Water container. What are they called? Why is my brain blanking? A, a, a jug tube. What are they called? Water bottle. <gasps> oh my god, I couldn't think of the word bottle. What is wrong with my brain? What an absolute papaga. Alright. Gladiator is back in control. Raw found a pin, I think. Alright, so aggression coming out. Ah, attempt to go in for a shatter there as Raw went aggressive, but nice bash from hydration. Mm, unfortunately, very uncoordinated from London. They they tried to you they tried to have like a self destruct engage there, but gesture backed off, and his shield was really weak, all over the place. So gladiators are just able to back up, shield it, and then push back in. Oh. Neither team is looking pretty uh, very good at this point. Both have incredibly powerful Zarya players. Decay and Profit are both pounding. But in terms of their, their main tanks and the way that their like their teamwork is, it's all, all over the place actually. Is that, speaking of water bottles, is Hydration's Brig super weak or is it just me? Um, I don't think it's super weak, but I don't know. I'll keep an eye on it. So far, I've only spoken about the good things that he's done because he's really making use of. Uh, of gestures, lack of comfort on Ryan. Right, so Gladiator is coming back into this. They've got a transcendence advantage to be able to take control of the point, and they can do a self destruct engage. So, either are reasonable. They just have to watch out for gesture. So, if they go aggressive, they need bubbles on Raw to make sure that he doesn't get shattered. Or if they want a slow approach and then attack with trance, basically Jester can shut them down with a nice earth shatter here. Because the most of Gladiator's ults that they have to work with are pretty aggressive, so. Lot of pressure there. Oh my goodness. They're just backing off. Trance has been used. They're just gonna rush down Jester. Yeah, he was just playing passive there, trying not to die. And Gladiators did well. Like they didn't really give him direct opportunity to shatter they didn't really rush at him they just slowly overwhelmed him with poke so pretty nice having said that london have now got a huge amount of ults to be able to get value out of they've got both of these support ults so london could definitely win this especially with that pick on shares they absolutely should win this what a fucking weird fight oh my god yeah this is Dunzo, even with that shatter from Raw. And I think another big problem from that was that when Gladiators took control of the point, they didn't find where everybody was coming from and make sure they did a lot of poke to them. Neither team looking good in that first map. I honestly... Gladiator is probably looking better, but... Okay. Any other games you plan to review? Yep, a lot of games tonight. I don't think Raw plays like Bumper. I think Raw plays like... A bit of a bot. Bumper's incredibly well coordinated with the rest of his team. Bumper just goes for very aggressive plays. Whoop. Raw gets bumped off. That means they have a huge amount of uh, damage and poke on these guys. Just retaining control of the high ground. Yes, just gonna generate a shit ton of primal. Big goose dies. They're just putting a load of poke on them. 
Gladiators had to be quicker to get inside or get to... Really, they should have gone to streets, I think. Like, if you get pushed down and you have any opportunity to speed boost over to streets, I think that's the best place to go. But all right, Big Goose is back with them. So, another attempt to go in up top, but Jester's going to have his Primal this time, so... Jester's Primal should be able to deal with them. Comes back up top, a lot of damage to the back line. Ooh, okay, don't know what Jester was up to there, but... Find that one pick. Right, so... Doshin has ult, but he doesn't want to use it. He wants to sync it with Decay and his Grav, so... Prophet's Grav could be big here as well. But again, when you're on defense, I don't think you really need to, like, play too aggressive. I think they should just wait. Okay, well. Don't know how God went down there, honestly. A lot of damage onto Hydration, he dies. But that was just the cleave damage coming out from Gesture. Transcendence has been popped. But Doshin used his Trance, but God still died? That's very weird. They can go back in on this, though. London are going to go back in. Riley's going to get used. They do have Sound Barrier for this. Ugh, God goes down again. I don't think that's necessarily God's fault. I mean, certainly that second death wasn't. Even the first death. It seemed like the team had different ideas of what they wanted to do. Prophet was setting up for an aggressive um, uh, Graviton, but... Uh, then backed off to try and bait them into it, and I feel like Guard wanted the Grav to be closer so that he could actually do damage in it, and wasn't able to. Are they going to catch Guard again? Oh my goodness. Run! Is it Prophet? Okay. Yeah, he's out. London going to be able to group up. They should be able to come back and take another fight. All right, Gladiators have got a self-destruct to engage with. Prophet's going to be much closer to the Grav. Just, what is Raw doing? Just goes for a random pin in the middle of the fight. If uh, if Guard had been aware of that, it could have easily got a bash and finished him off. Yeah, I think you really have to punish that when Raw goes for those dumb plays. If Raw goes that aggressive, you have to be able to bash and discard him and just kill him. A lot of damage onto Void in the middle of that. He dies. But Decay's going to have a grab up now as well, and no support ults available for London. The fact that they got the DMAC on Void is good, but they need to keep applying this pressure. Make sure that they feel the hurt of not having Void with them. But okay, now that Void is back in mech, and they have a beat available, things aren't looking too bad for them. They're going to get caught in the grab, so this needs to be beated. It's beated. They're trying to peel. Oh my god, what was that? Roar out of position, and they gesture goes for the uh, shatter, but gets booped in the middle of it. But okay, they're able to make use of it. And if you're playing against Raw, and honestly, if you're Raw playing against Gesture, both of these Rhines should be looking for opportunities when the enemy Rhine is out of position and going for those big shatters, because neither Rhine is very good at being able to keep track of that kind of stuff. Charger and cooldown. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I think it's just different styles, Alpha GBR. I don't think there's necessarily a best way of doing it. I mean, if you are really a god, then obviously playing aggressive is best because you can just win a fight for your team. But it's so high risk, high reward uh, that some... I mean, depends on your, like, how, how skillful you are as well. I don't really know is the answer. And I don't think that there's necessarily an answer to the question. Certainly, NYXL is a more safe team, so you wouldn't want a guy like Bumper on the NYXL. But if it fits your team's style, then either is reasonable. In a perfect world, perhaps you would want to play more defensive on the um, on defense and more aggressive on offense to maximize your your uh, ability to play the clock. All right, London have just got so many ults here to be able to pin them in spawn. I mean, Prophet has a free grav because there's no support ultimates. Prophet should probably use the grav to initiate with here. 
uh, like, really try and get an early grab out. Want, like, see if you can force bubbles and then go for grab. So Decay's used his uh, personal. So now, okay, they backed off pretty quickly. They've used their speed boost to back off. So maybe try and force the bubbles out again and then go for a grab. Mm, I definitely would have carried on holding close there. But I think maybe they think Big Goose is up to his ult. So they've backed off because they know that they can't just win a fight with the grab. But they could have just won the fight with the grab. And anyway... Oh, yeah, aggression, but nice read of the fight by Raw. Big Goose with a slightly late... Wow, huge amount of damage on Raw as well. But Ocean dies at 99%, so this is a free grab. So, really unfortunate there for Bad Ocean because they absolutely would have won that fight, I think, if uh, Bad Ocean stays alive in the middle of the self-destruct. But unfortunately, somehow Bad Ocean died, and he was on like 99%, so... Eh, London almost certainly would have won this map if Bedoshin stayed alive. Will Re Breno reinforce training for reviews today or tomorrow? Uh, I could put it in... Um, I could put it in... I could put it in the WhatsApp group that we're in. But the problem is, when I use Visor, the, the, the quality for you guys is so much worse on stream. So, adding somebody else isn't the greatest, but... Alright. Trance available. Raw used his Shatter. Didn't do anything whatsoever. Both Decay and Profit are building up to this grab. Decay and Profit both have grabs. Follow-up is... Are they going to get an Earth Shatter out? Yes, but the bomb made a big difference. For Gladiators, huge amount of damage. Wow! The K just beat London slightly to the punch. A truck review? You're not going to talk about that Shaz trance? Oh yeah, the fact that Shaz used the trance when it was already over. When the fight was already over. I'm paying attention to the chat instead, Super, because I'm a good streamer. VOD review with Bren. Yeah, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Okay. London play aggro. So, a bit of a self-destruct engage. I mean, that's a very weird self-destruct, isn't it? They trade sound barriers. Decay beating Profit again by like 25% on the ult. Decay generates his ult so quickly. Avoided 55, but you don't want to wait for that. The case just building his ult so fast. Bubble got used there. Okay, they waited, and now Prophet has his available. Both uh, Zens use Trance. And things are kind of back to normal now. Next big ult online is Voids, but... Oh my god, they're all running over to the left. Seeing if they can bait Roar out of position. See if they can get a Shatter going. Self-destruct engage. Gesture has to back up, but he isn't able to... Oh, where's the sound? Uh, not the sound barrier. Where's the speed boost? I think they were going for some kind of... Earth Shatter and pressure on the left-hand side. See if they can drag players out of position and then shatter them. But... It seems like in the dry engagements, London get overwhelmed very easily. Uh, nobody helps gesture as well. That's a big thing. Like a lot of the players are just off doing other shit or or just hiding behind gesture. It's so rare that you see Nuss boop pressure away from uh, gesture or like uh, Fury come and boot people away. What is this? Oh, this was the fight like ten years ago. Do you think of yourself as an entertainer or an analyst? Why not both? Why not both? <laughs> the Shanghai C9 against Dallas was outrageous, wasn't it? Okay, let's skip this stuff. Consider doing a weekly VOD review with Bren. Yeah, I'll probably do probably do that definitely when I get to LA. I'm planning on doing stuff fairly regularly. We might even do like a few times a week. 
Like when we come back from work, we'll. What I'm thinking is, here's here's my vision for how it might go down. Bren is living with us until the first of April, so if I get back before the first of April, which I might do, um, then uh, every night after work, we could, or like every night after a broadcast finishes, we could go back to ours, launch up the VOD review on the TV, link the TV to my laptop, and stream the VOD review plus a webcam on and us on the couch. Link us up with, um, what do you call them? Clip on mics, which we have a bunch of clip on mics. And then we'd just be, me, Johnny, and Brent would be sat there sipping beers on the couch, talking about the game, looking over stuff. So I think that would be pretty interesting. Also, what I've got planned later on in the year, like once I actually get settled in, is to build like um, a podcast studio inside my room. So I'm gonna soundproof the room, not soundproof it, but like, you know, deaden it because uh, my room last year was <clears throat> incredibly bad for anything like that. It was big and echoey and shit, but I'll put some like, you know, rugs on the walls or something, but I'll, I'll put up some like tapestries on the walls and get uh, some artwork on the walls and stuff like uh, I've got a canvas here actually which works pretty well as like a sound dampener um, do stuff like that and then set up like a, a table and have some fairly regular podcasts is what I want to try and produce because I think I figure we've really got to take advantage of the fact that there's like 180 players plus pff, 100 coaches and managers and analysts and all sorts of stuff working on the league so we should be able to find like very regular, very interesting guests that can, and it'll be the only Overwatch podcast, I think, where people are there regularly in person and I'll just have them round for beers for like, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour and chat some shit. Not necessarily even about the person or about their team, just about like, I don't know, I'll get, I get super in and we'll just talk about, talk about Shaz's trances or something. Because he really wants to talk about Shaz's transcendences. So I think that would be really cool. Anyway, wait, what? I haven't even been watching, looking at this. All right, so they're running Wrecking Ball instead of the Diva. So they've got some kind of setup where Fury flanks from coast and sinks up. Where is Fury? All right, so Fury's just going to go straight in the front, try and barrel people off the high ground, and somehow kill Shaz. What? Okay, Gladiators weren't even slightly ready for that. I love the Wrecking Ball set plays, though. I think it's a really cool hero to incorporate into these set plays. I love the way that Shock do it with Choi on, um, on like, King's Row, and they tried to do it on Ruins a little bit, but I think they stuck with it for a bit too long. Like, I think it works best on hybrid or assault maps for, like, the opening push, especially if the enemy team doesn't exactly know what they're going on about. Thanks, Paquito One. Appreciate that. Very kind. Talk about your big foreheads. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, thanks for linking the Fraggy thing in the Discord. I'll check it out maybe after this game or something. All right, God goes down. Prophet's going to fall as well. All right. All right, so London have to uh, win a fairly dry fight here. No, alts really online. Oh, they are going to have some, but it's going to be even for both sides. So, personal used, projected, projected, personal for decay, absorbs a lot of damage. Just just got the Discord orb on him. He's tr going to try and break it, but then peaks the fire strike. So Gesture, Gesture goes aggressive, gets a Discord Orb on him, gets it cleansed, goes aggressive again, gets Discord Orb on him. Because Prophet doesn't play as aggressive and uses his personal like earlier in the fight, Raw takes less damage. And then Gesture continues to peek so the Discord Orb doesn't come off him because he doesn't break line of sight. And then goes for the Fire Strike and the rest of his team push around the corner and get shattered. So they just kind of waste the grab. So... Okay. 
The pick on Big Goose here could be pretty crucial, though, because it's going to take a long time for Big Goose to get back in the fight. Gladiator should probably back off a little bit. Because Raw's just going to get over... Oh, Raw's hiding. Raw's hiding! Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> oh, I need a shower. That's a great call from Mitch. That's fantastic. Did you see Benchmob's update on the bench model? He said stage one of last season was remarkably predictable, which seems counterintuitive. Uh, I can't really remember stage one of last season. But it could be. Could be the case. Also, it's not Benchmob that runs the bench model. It's Eden Foley who runs the bench model. Bench model. But he, uh, he releases updates on Benchmob. So, Eden Foley make, made the bench model and releases updates on the bench mob which is run by bench mob i know it's complex but the guy that run, runs it is called eden foley i don't think uh i don't think he means predictable in the sense that people's uh power rankings coming into the league were correct i think he means predictable in the sense that the teams that were winning at the beginning of the stage were winning all throughout the stage like, it wasn't like teams varied wildly. Like, we knew from the first couple of weeks which teams were good and which teams were bad. I don't think he means that, uh, like, it was predictable in the sense that... He means mathematically predictable. Like, it was possible for the algorithm, after a little bit of... Uh, after a few results, to make accurate predictions. That's what he means, I'm pretty sure. Alright. Fury, Sambaria. Okay. Raw was really. Raw couldn't. He, Raw was put in a horrible position there. It's not really his fault that he couldn't block any of that. I mean, Jester's got his. Uh, Jester's got his Earth Shatter, so he doesn't know whether to shield Gesture or shield the bomb. And then the boop comes in from Nurse as well, so it's just nicely executed. Now, having said that, I don't think the LA Gladiator should have even gone for that grab. I think Decay's grab just kind of sets London up to win because there's no way that L Gladiators can follow up on it. And given that Gladiators are on the defense, they should try and drag out the clock as long as possible. Not always raw, only sometimes. Exactly, exactly. Okay, Samba available for London. They could rally engage and then see if they can get value out of a Samba. They also have the Grav. Both teams use Grav at the same time, roughly speaking, previously. So Profit able to wipe them on the previous engagement was good. Big grab, Transcendence comes in, seeing if they can get... Okay, nice Earth Shatter. Big... Big combo, big combo. I don't think Decay was able to save his bubbles for that grab as well. So, I do quite like that from London. You know, just the fact that they force out the bubbles before they go for that big combo says that they're starting to understand how to play because previously they'd just try and force things a little too much okay so they're going again oh no they're not going again i saw just i, I saw the wrecking ball and i just assumed that they were running the wrecking ball strike again but okay they're, they're going uh farah sombra so this is alright, you can have EMP and Barrage. It's a, it's an okay way of being able to deal with this. That's especially good against the Gladiators, because Gladiators are about the only team that forces Ryan Goats on Numbani point A. Most of the teams will... okay. Uh, I'm not sure the Bedoshin should have been playing from there. I think Bedoshin should have been playing from main, honestly, but... 
Are they just trying to get a sleep dart? actually lands a big anti-grenade in the back and then tries to run away they, they kill it before he's able to run but a really nice strat there i don't really know why they are focusing on killing decay so much rather than focusing on killing hydration god does have emp though they have emp and they have barrage so they have everything they need to do to be able to find a couple of targets sleep dart has also come out onto shaz so what the fuck was that? They sleep a target, and then everyone's like, hmm, I wonder who they're going to shoot at. And then they shoot at that target. I mean, come on. What was that from London? Void still had all of his defense matrix. It's in a tiny little choke point where it can be blocked super easily. And they waste both of their ults on that. I mean, if you get a hack on Void, or you get a hack on Decay, or a hack on Raw, that EMP Barrage should have been easy two kills, and instead they just forced it. Okay, Sambara was used very quickly there, and I think that was just because someone got hacked. I think Big Goose was about to get hacked, so he used his Sambara or something? Don't know, a bit weird. Nana Boost available as well. If gesture goes weak. God. Ah! God about to die. They didn't invest their nano boost on him. Who did they put the nano boost even on? Oh boy. Well. Well. I think the Farah Sombra comp isn't too bad against LA Gladiators. I think it's bad in general on Numbani if teams are running Winston Goats, but because Gladiators try and force Ryan Goats, I think it's actually an okay plan. But. I think the execution there was pretty poor. And also, God was only able to generate one EMP and got caught in the grav, so... Not great. Not great. Not great. Do I think the next patch will finally kill goats? I definitely think it'll make it less viable. I think it'll make comps like Farah Sombra more viable against goats. Um... Should we do some halftime analysis, ladies and gentlemen? I think we should. What do you think of Paris' performance last week? Do you think they'll still be able to make playoffs? I think Paris massively underperformed last week. I think they'll still be able to make playoffs, yes. Yes, I'm going to change my rankings around before next week. But I haven't watched all the games from last week yet because I went on holiday. Kind of. So, yeah. If Arissa Bunker comps became meta, would that be the worst meta Overwatch has ever seen? Yeah, maybe. Sombra Genji Dive works better for Numbani than Sombra Farah. Ah. Uh, I think the Genji is pretty difficult to get value out of against uh, Goats until the Nana Blade EMP is available. The Genji would find it difficult just to be able to... I mean, Farah's just so, got so much poke against the Rhine Goats comp that I think Farah Sombra is better. Um, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, I wondered how they killed Shaz, but it must have been. Do I find Decay Zarya that much better than Shofors? Yeah, individually, Decay is a lot better than Zarya on... on sorry. Individually, Decay is a lot better than Shofor on Zarya, yes. Uh, but a lot of their teamwork seems... Worse, I think. I caught some snippets of the Gladiator Spark game and it looked terrible. Hey, High Noon! 11 months in a row. Thank you very much. But yeah, Decay and Profit are both super good, and Shofor is not really. Shofor can hold his own, Shofor's okay, and he's pretty intelligent, and his Sombra's good, but he's not some kind of beast Zarya. I mean, look at these stats, they're pretty crazy. Pretty crazy for Decay. 
Alright, let's have a look at this. Uh, as far as who's progressed, I would have to say Fraggy. We did a lot of work together towards the start of the season. I think we made a lot of progress, and we are all really happy with how he's performing currently. Okay, so he must be playing in scrims and stuff like that. Well, Bren, you were wrong. But I also thought the Gladiators were going to win. So. I think just because Goats is less viable doesn't mean that it doesn't get played as well. I think it could be the kind of situation where Goats still gets a lot of play and a lot of maps. And also Goats could still be a very reasonable counter to, like, dive if you go back to dive. So, yeah. I don't think Shofar's washed up. I think Shofar's fine. It's just that his Zarya isn't crazy powerful, and you do want a crazy powerful Zarya in this meta. I don't think he's washed, though. I think he's still going to be fine in a lot of different uh, metas. If Shofar, if Shofar can play Brig, I could imagine them running that as well. Decay and Shofar. All right, Jester goes up top. He's going to try and do a bit more damage to them. Okay, but they're under there. Nice boop from Void. But okay, Fury retains high ground control. Profit doesn't, though. Profit isn't able to. All right, they're going to try and isolate Raw. A lot of damage onto him. Really nice work. Really nice. When both main tanks go down like this, it really favors the team that had the uh, had the Winston. Having said that, Void gets a boop on Bedoshin. But Ocean out of position. You'd want him to play in Mega. So, there you go. It was a decent start from London, honestly. It's just that they didn't have great position after they traded the main tanks. Mm, not great. Atlanta played well. Oh, Decay takes a lot of damage there. Goes down to 200 health. He does have an advantage. A lot of damage onto Jester's shield. Raw's only half health, though. Okay, they're going to rally. Counter rally. Bubble's available. Ooh, Bubble actually didn't even get used there. I don't know why. But, alright. They're just playing around Decay instead. Bubble gets used on Void. Just suiciding Roar in in order to uh, get space. Shaz also has trance. Double support ultimates here for gladiators. Nice. They chase down Bedoshin. That's uh, worth. Because they retain control over the point as well. Sambara comes out. Grav. Grav bomb combo. Has to be able to find... Oh, it's way too late from Gesture. Mm. Shadow from both teams, but... Uh, London could have London could have won that with their grab bomb combo, but they really messed it up And I'm not really sure why like why did gesture mess this up so badly the graph comes in the, So bomb is down Oh, it's just too late it, it, There's a nice def defensive self-destruct here from void. So gesture has to keep his shield up but honestly if profit just like here profit has his projected bubble if Prophet gives his projected bubble to... I think he gives it to Guard by accident, actually. Yeah, maybe he gives it to Guard by accident. Maybe that's the problem. Because if he gives his projected bubble here to Gesture, Gesture can go for the pin on Raw, and Gesture doesn't have to worry about getting caught in the defensive self-destruct. But I can't see who it goes on. Impossible to tell, really. But anyway, yeah, Gesture holds up his shield for too long, and the timing isn't quite right. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean I don't mean that gesture should shatter, I mean gesture should pin. Maybe I'm saying the wrong word. But like ideally you would want to put the projected bubble on ge gesture and then gesture pins raw and then they all die in the bubble. Uh in the bomb. 
It was on gesture. You can see it when he pins. He just pins late. Oh, really? Is that just gesture? Fucking up. No, that's the explosion you can see. Oh no, yeah, 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 no, you're right, there it is. I spotted it there for a frame. There, there, it's on Gesture there, you can just see it. Yeah, so Gesture here doesn't realize that he's got a bubble. And doesn't realize that he should be going for the pin, like, now, as the bomb is coming in. So that's just a misplay by Gesture. Unlucky. Well, not unlucky, bad, but, okay. IBR7000, thank you for the Twitch Brain sub. And yeah, even if even if Gesture was gonna die, then he probably should have just pinned it anyway. <sighs> okay, let's take a look at this. Both teams want to run Winston Goats. So, not running the Sombra. Fair enough. So, both running Winston Goats. So, gonna try and take control of the high ground. In. Took a bubble. Gets moved off the high ground. But okay. They're just... Gonna play for a while trying to push Decay off the high ground. Uh, okay. Decay's knocked off. This is all fine. Guards up top. Whoa, a lot of damage on Profit. They have to try and peel for Profit. Gesture's actually generated more ult at this point. But Ocean takes quite a bit. Or over top, but he's now down. So at some point, they want to go for this dive. Oh, so much damage onto Garden but Ocean. Huge poke. London have to back off. Profit weak. Decay way further ahead than Profit. As you would expect from the defensive Zarya, really. Okay, now they're fully healthy. London will want to go for another engage. Jump again. Weirdly, Gesture doesn't go for a kind of dive onto some kind of backline and disrupt people. They trade Raw for Guard. That should be better for London. Profit's weak. Sambari traded for both sides. Profit really needs some peel still when this Sambari comes off. He's managed to get out. Mm. They can certainly try and get some value out of this, but the transcendence is available. And Raw's back in the fight, so this ain't looking so good here for London Spitfire. They grab? Okay, that should just be a Sambari though. Uh, sorry, a transcendence. Raw dies again, but I'm not convinced. Okay. That did manage to get value. They had Primal this time around. A very strange series of fights there, actually. Super strange. But Doshin got tons of damage whenever he was trying to come in. Now Raw's back, and Decay now has Grav, so this should still be a win for Gladiators. But Shaz has died, and Raw is, doesn't have the bubble. Wow. It's a really weird fight. Yeah, I think Prophet's the best player in Spitfire. I think Gladiators will eventually bump Water up to the main roster. Uh, they certainly could do. Water looks like a pretty good player. Looks like a player with a lot of potential. Um, Decay and Water would be a pretty nutty DPS duo. Uh, but... Uh, I'm not sure that that would really work too well for them. That's a lot of players that don't speak great English when the entirety of their coaching staff is English speaking. Rally engage from Gladiators. They have a self-destruct available as well, but loads of ults available for London Spitfire. Okay, bomb is coming in. Oh, Profit gets caught. It's a really nice bash from Hydration, actually. A bash catches Profit in the middle of the, uh, the self-destruct. 
And London invested both of their support ultimates trying to keep everyone alive. Uh, they should have just retreated when Void self destruct came in. Instead, they used their beat to try and survive it. But it's not a very good idea. Water and hydration. Well, water is actually a flex DPS player, so it would be water and decay, I think. Uh, I'm not so sure that Bishu is an integral part of this team in the sense that he always has to be in the starting roster, but um, Bishu did play pretty well last season. He was okay. I wouldn't say he was amazing, but he was okay. And he does that live translation for them, but apparently that is like quite overblown. I don't think that he does that so much anymore. So Void gets whipped off, I think, into the water. Double Grav comes in. They actually catch Hydration. Strange again. Very scrappy goats from both of these two teams. It's all over the place. I mean, what was Raw doing there with that charge? This should be an easy cleanup for London. Yeah, Alarm and Hua, you should be very pog. How many games do I still have to review? Like, four? If you type exclamation mark schedule, it'll take you through the games that I'm planning to do today. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, another four after this is finished. Alarm isn't eligible till stage three of season three. That's pretty crazy. I assume he'll still get signed next season if he's available. Nice bash, nice boop from Big Goose. Profit on the high ground though. This is how these things work. Ooh, another nice boop from Big Goose. Ooh, really nice. The boop timed at the same time as the aggression from everybody as they pushed around the right hand side. So Big Goose managed to boop the players off the high ground just as uh, Raw and Shaz swung out wide. So they did a lot of damage to people. That was pretty cool. Uh, a pretty cool like uh, counterplay to retake control of the high ground. Decay takes an armor pack just to make sure that he can stay up top. But the jump pack's going to be back quicker so they can make sure that Decay doesn't stay up top. Decay has fallen down. Primal now available though. Primal's going to be a big one. Really nice. Oh my god, that was really nice from Gladiators. They just... They know that Jester's going to go in and they speed boost straight into them immediately. That's so nice from Gladiators. Oh, Alarm is 18 this July. Okay, that was just bullshit then. All right, cool. Thanks, chat, for feeding me nonsense. I think Valiant will get their first win against Houston. Yeah. Attempted a boop. They tried to give that bubble to Gesture to make sure he couldn't get booped, but it doesn't matter. They forced everyone off the high ground. Gladiators with a huge amount of vaults. Both teams, really, with a huge amount of vaults here. Decay takes a lot of damage. They have to back off a little bit. Grav, long range. So instead of going for the boop there, they use Raw's Primal to try and uh, boot people into the bomb. Transcendence has been used. Did Nuss's Sambara get denied there? No. I just didn't really notice because he buried the, uh, the bomb so it disappeared from everyone so quickly. It's a nice use of the primal, honestly. Primaling people into the uh, 
from the grab into the bomb. It's well timed as well from Gladiators. This is the best that Gladiators have looked on this defense of Volskaya. This looks way more coordinated than they did on first point or on offense. Uh, Valine are definitely more likely to get their first win first. Justice might not get their first win in stage one. Uh, they play against Mayhem, so they might get a first win against Mayhem, but... I don't know, man. I think Mayhem are a better team. So I think the something something to point out here as well is that Gesture doesn't really take advantage of the best times to go aggressive on gladiators. You want to get them as they cross from area to area. So Gesture because he sits aggressive there and then jumps backwards, he doesn't have his jump available to actually do a lot of damage to them here. So the way that Philly plays this, which I th think is much better, is that Prophet sits much more aggressive and is firing right clicks into them, and then Gesture will go and dive them and use his bubbles then. So, Gesture only gets 22%, and they don't even have really any chance of killing anybody on the Gladiators before they get into position. Okay, now, now they could go for the same play, though. They could jump Shaz there. But okay, they don't bother. Now they go in. Just trying to isolate Raw. Gesture weak. He gets out. Gesture... Yeah, it doesn't take Mega, but he takes healing. Plays very spread out on London, but it's quite nice. Raw goes for another charge. Gets bashed. Gonna die. Roar and pressing shift. Name a more iconic combo. Transcendence is used. Wow, Gladiators use their grav in this? I suppose they only need one tick, don't they? Oh, and they're going to be able to find everybody. Bit of a risky commitment, but not when you need a tick. And they're going to win the fight anyway, so... Yeah, it works for them. Gladiators really won that on the defense, though. Bumper and hiding for Shatter? Yeah, you're right. That is a more iconic combo. Alright. Forward hold for London. But they back off. So, there's two ways of playing this forward hold. One is to just play the forward hold and play it really aggressive and make sure the cart can't move. And the other way is to back off and hold arch before you lose anybody. Uh, but London have gone for that just to give guard some extra EMP. So London definitely don't want to take that early fight and just die. They're just taking the early fight in order to build EMP for guard. So 50%. But they are just backing off. Like, you do have to play slower when you play with the Sombra. But they're giving up a huge amount of room. Okay, now they should play aggro, though. They shouldn't give up any more room. Raw and pressing shift. Land some right clicks, dude. Oh, he's already got his ult. So, doesn't really matter, does it? Armor pack and peel is all there though. That's a thonker. I'm not gonna lie. That's a thonker. You need your Zen to be able to apply a Discord at the very least. Okay. Transcendence is used from Bedoshin, but that just allows Gladiator. Why have Gladiators used both support ults? Okay. I mean, they win the fight, but. They used every single ultimate, and they didn't need to. Well, not great play from either team there. Fury getting overzealous, and then Gladiators layer the support ults. But all right. They get point A. Uh, NYXL versus Soul tomorrow, not today. 
I'm gonna do NYXL against Soul and NYXL against Defiant tomorrow. No wait, I think I'm doing NYXL against Defiant today. Wait, what am I doing today? Yeah, I'm doing NYXL against Defiant today. And one NYXL against Soul I'm doing tomorrow. Or maybe the next day. I can't even remember. No, wait. I've only got today and tomorrow, don't I? Wait, did I? Have I done this right? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Wait, why am I doing five games today and only three tomorrow? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Am I dumb? The answer is yes. Okay, we'll do Florida versus Houston tomorrow as well. Okay, so I'm only doing four games today. All right, let me redo this. Edit, com, schedule. And we remove that game from the end. I, I'm always yawning. For when I talk a lot, I tend to yawn. Okay. Hello, Azam1603. Uh, the visa's actually coming along pretty well. All right, so I've got this game and then three more games. Okay, that makes sense. It is contagious. Yeah, it's, it's even contagious from human to dog. Like, I know it's contagious dog to human, but it's also contagious human to dog. Like, if you yawn, uh, your dog will often yawn as well. Okay. Absolutely, the Spitfire had to follow up on that one. Big, bigly. All right, that looks okay. London gonna try and hold forwards here, just get a load of damage out. They can really keep rotating this for a long time. I think Dorado first point is actually a pretty. Oh, sorry, not first point, but this point is actually pretty good for playing this comp. Nice pin onto Big Goose. And that allows God to build up a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff. And, and normally you would want to try and pressure God a lot and make him translocate so that he's not able to build up his EMP that much. But on Dorado point B here, it's really difficult to make God run away because they have so much control over the entirety of the patio. That was a weird fight though because London just won that straight off a, a what do you call it? Solistrato, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Yes, yeah, the circadian rhythm doesn't really reset very well. So, EMP should get this one. And now Fury's going to have his grav. So the grav should be big. They might get double graved here. But London should still have an advantage based on their support ults. And Big Goose goes down. Decay shouldn't use. And Shaz has gone Anna, so... Good for the Bionades, but bad in terms of breaking the ult combos that they're stuck in. This is a good attempt. Oh, this is a good opportunity for them to get aggressive, though. Because God only has 41%. Bash on Gesture. Grav, Trance, trying to keep Jester alive. Okay, they're going to be able to stay alive. Roar is pretty weak. He dies. Nice rotations of ultimates so far from London. Yeah, they do seem to be very successful with this particular lineup. This seems to be London's best lineup. When they play Sombra Goats and they have Guard and Fury on Zarya. They just seem more coordinated. Okay, waiting for the EMP. 
EMP trying to catch Raw. Bit strange that they didn't go that heavy on Raw there, but they still managed to find all the kills, obviously, because they had an EMP. Okay, they, they need to make sure that they don't get all caught in the graph here, though. It's, like, massively important. Oh, Raw just tries to skill the fight. That could come back to haunt them, because now Fury's going to get a huge graph. Barrier available, but barrier also avail available for... Uh... Oh, no, they already used the barrier? Why did they use the barrier? To, to mitigate the Earth Shatter? Nuss must have used it for that reason. Pretty nice shot from Gesture. Raw probably should have predicted it, because it was as the graph came down, but... It's pretty good for a London. Yeah, London should definitely win this. Although they only caught Void. Ah, they could lose this. Oh, I think they're probably going to lose this. Fury's about to get his grab, though. Fury's grab should also be a game winner. Okay, Fury has it. Are they all ready to go aggressive? Okay, Big Goose dies anyway. Must have been bashed, I think. Grav. Mm, Raw has been nano boosted. It's a nice way of mitigating the nano, uh, the grav, honestly. Just giving you a ride in the nano when he gets weak. Okay. Both teams played that okay, honestly. London should have been able to uh, pick up the kills there, I think. But uh, Gladiators mitigated it fairly well. Right, EMP is really important. They, should, they probably should have won this on point B, but... God has to find a successful one here. Yeah, it catches Raw and Decay. Alright, so they're going to be able to win this one. I think this is nice. Honestly, I do think that this is the best roster that London's been able to field so far. When they played King's Row against... Must have been Paris, I think. They looked easily their most coordinated. I think uh, Guard and Fury are probably pretty good at communicating. Ooh, how and how and uh, how and when they want to use their ultimates. So it just leads them to be very decisive when they have this roster. How did Gladiators outplay the EMP? Uh, they put a lot of pressure on guard, basically. They, they, are they passing water around? They put a lot of pressure on guard, and then Hydration got a bash on him, and guard thought that he just had to use it, and only it caught, only caught Void. Um, and then they outplayed the Grav by only having their, uh, their Rhine really get caught in it, and then just using the Nana Boost on him. I think it was like Roar and Hydration that got caught in the Grav, and both of them have shields. So, and then they just use the nano on um, on raw. Is there any way to get the map only vods after the games are over? You mean the top down map? Uh, there are for us, but not for you guys. I think. Right, Syriac. Sure, sure. Alright, Void dropped underneath there. Early bubble onto Gesture. Later bubble for Raw, but doesn't really get much done. That means Gesture's gonna have his up quicker. What? How does Decay die? Oh, Decay's just a little split off from the rest of his team. Oh, Decay just too slow to back off. Doesn't get the call at the same time as everybody else. Everybody else rotates around the corner, and Decay had slightly too aggressive positioning and ends up just getting lasered down. Took the Discord Orb and a huge amount of damage. Already used his personal bubble. 
fight is pretty much done. I yeah, you, win, like, you win in 5% of fights? Yeah, you, when your Zarya dies first, you only... Uh, I think he was pressured, Spencer W. He got bashed by hydration. Uh, you can do the math on uh, what it is. What are my thoughts on the meta in general? Uh, I've already talked about this a little bit in my subscriber Q&A um, video, which you can find on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you go on my YouTube channel, one of the most recent videos, maybe the most recent video, is a subscriber Q&A that I released. Um, one of the questions was about the meta recently. I talked a lot about goats. Both transits get traded. Nuss is closer to getting this barrier. Graph bomb combo as well. Mm, nice. Basically, I quite like watching goats. I think the meta's in a reasonable place. Hopefully, it'll be even better after the PTR patch. Skip straight to the worms highlights. Yeah, man. I actually can't wait to get to LA and be on a PC that can handle playing Overwatch because as much as I do enjoy doing VOD reviews and hanging out with people and stuff like that and just chatting with the chat, um, I am missing playing uh, video games and feeding my brains out on stream. And also, Zombotech, just think of all the lovely people in my chat that haven't experienced me feeding outrageously. I gotta give it to them, you know? Shouldn't use your grav! Don't use that grav! Oh, no. -y. But Ocean does actually have a really nice uh, angle. But Toshin's got such a nice angle. But Ocean fragged out. All right, fair enough. What SR am I? I'm only 3,200, and I love to throw. Uh, if you get me in your games, we're probably going to lose. My side Shonak plays uh, like nothing else on Earth. Wait, was that the end of the game? Oh, did, oh, they drew on Numbani, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Huh. I forgot that that was the end of the game. I was like, 1-1? One, one? What? Alright. Next, next, next. Even Doer is a better Zen than Sideshow? That's not true at all. That's actually not true at all. Yo, Puckett and Hex are both Ragers, and uh, Semler is a Rager, and uh, Bren gets mad at me in games, Matt and Mitch refuse to play with me because I troll them, uh, but the God Squad is me, Bren, Matt and Mitch, but uh, the, they often refuse to play with me because I, I throw. <laughs> What do I think Gladiator should do to get out of this slump? I don't know, it's really weird. It's like the... I think Raw needs to improve. Um, but I also think that... They... They don't have a clear... Game plan in a lot of these fights. And they don't react very quickly, or they don't react as quickly as a team as they used to. I don't know, it's very strange. Don't think I really have any specifics that Gladiators need to work on. I can just point out mistakes that they made, and then they have to fix the individual mistakes. But to like, to categorize it into one thing is, or like a couple of things for them to improve on is is weird. Dude, I could I made it to Masters last season, I think, didn't I? I think I did. I'm pretty sure I made it to Masters last season, didn't I? I think I did. Or not last season, but one of the seasons. Did I really not? I thought I had. Right, we're gonna we're gonna have to check this. We're gonna have to check this. Where is it? Battle.net. Right here we go. Right, let's have a look. It really has been so long since I last played. <laughs> 
If Bishu was the diva player they scrim with coming into the season, they might be off on comms till he comes back. Possibly, it's possible, but they've had enough time to mesh with Void, and they didn't look this bad at the beginning of the season when they were playing with Void, so uh, I don't really... What? Waiting on another installation or update? What are you talking about? I don't even have any of these other games. I don't play anything made by Blizzard apart from Overwatch. Hello? Battle.net is updating. Can it get on with it then? Can it get on with it? Am I supposed to close it or something? Top left, you papega. What? What do you mean? What are you talking about, top left? Restart now. Really? Do I have to exit it or something? You have an update ready, restart now. Was that not right? <laughs> ah! XD debated. Okay. Have you used a PC before? <laughs> All right, let's let's see. Just let's see. Let's see. I think I made it to Masters in the most recent season I played. But I don't think I played any games last season. I think it must have been two seasons ago. Because I haven't played any Overwatch since December. And it's March. So... I haven't played any video games since December. I played... Actually, that's a lie. I played some Super Smash Brothers with my mates. And I played some Super Mario Kart. But, uh... Why do they both have Super in the name? I've only just realized that, actually. Why is it... Why is Smash Super Smash Bros? And why is Mario Kart Super Mario Kart? They don't? Don't they? I thought Mario Kart was called, like, Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Kart or something. Super... Ma Super... Su ma really? Really? There's no Super Mario Kart? Huh. Mario Kart 8. Yeah, you're right. It's Mario Kart 8. Yeah. Was one of the games called Super Mario Kart? <laughs> Prid plays. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I, my, I do actually have an absolute Papega brain. Super Mario Kart for the Wii. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super Mario Kart for SNES. What? Does SNES stand for Super Nintendo Entertainment System? Or is it the... Oh. Wow. I never had a SNES. My first console was a PS2. And then I got a Wii. And those are the only two consoles I've ever owned. I've had like a... I had like a Game Game Boy Advance and a PSP and a Switch and stuff, if they count as consoles. They're more like handheld consoles, you know, but... But yeah, there you go. Actually, no, that's not true. I had a Sega Mega Drive. I had a Sega Mega Drive that I used to play a lot of, but... Um, that was more my parents' console. No, it wasn't really my parents' console. But they didn't let me play on it very much. So it didn't feel like it was really mine. Anyway, let's have a look at what my SR was. The Mega Drive Massive. Yeah, I had a Sega Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Sega Mega Drive was the European one, wasn't it? I think a Sega Mega Drive was the UK one. I think in the US they call it like a Sega Genesis or something. Mega Drive and Genesis are the same thing. Yeah. That's the most niche console to have. It wasn't me that bought it. It was um, 
it was a hand-me-down from one of my mum's friend's sons. So my mum's friend had a son who was maybe like five years older than me, and he had it, and he got bored of it or something, and so he gave it to me. So I probably had it way after it was... Actually, that's really interesting. When was the Sega Mega Drive a thing? Sega Mega Drive, when was it released? Because... Oh, okay, the, the Genesis, all right, fair enough. It was... Oh my god, it was released in like... 1990. I must have had it in the early 2000s. I must have had it in like 2002. That thing must have been like 10 years old at that point. Discontinued for years by the time I had it. Never even realised. I genuinely didn't even realise that I was playing like a way out of date console in my youth. Yeah, Christ. So I must have... I started playing the Sega Mega Drive when I was... 8. And I'm 94. So that was 2002 when I started playing on it. And I played the Sega Mega Drive up until I got the PS2 on my 13th birthday. So when was I 13? Jesus Christ. What's that, 20... Oh my god, how does maths work? 2017? No, what? <laughs> Stop! 2007? Oh my god, I'm actually so embarrassed I just added 13 to 1994 and got 2017! <laughs> That's <laughs> unreal. You got a PS2 after the PS3 came out? Yeah, I think I got a PS2 when I was 13. So 2007. Is that right? Was it my 13th? No, I think it was my 12th birthday. Yeah, I think it was my 12th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when did... So I was... So I was like... Jesus. So I was like 12 years late on the Sega Genesis. What was the PlayStation 2? How many years late was I on the PS2? Oh my god, really? Were they released in 2000? Holy cow. So yeah, I was seven years late on that as well. There you go. There you go. That's, uh, that's what happens when you're... Uh, Actually, I do kind of remember that because I remember, like, the year after I got a PS2, everyone was getting PS3s. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> How can you guys afford to buy brand new consoles for, like, 400 quid? Uh, what am I trying to do here? Career profile. Solid. Alright, compet... Season 13. Of course. Decay all the way down. All right, so no, last season apparently I only hit thirty two hundred, and that that season I only hit thirty one. So when was the season I made masters? I thought I made masters recently. Oh, I made like thirty four hundred in season nine. Oh, unfortunate, unfortunate. I haven't then. I haven't made masters recently. I've thrown my way out. That's terrible. It's probably bugged, Kappa. It's probably bugged. There was some season, wasn't it? There was some season. Yeah. Look at that. That's an incredible achievement. That's what happens when... Um, I don't even know what I was playing as well. I mean, why was I playing so much Ryan? I can't even play Ryan. I can't even remember making Masters in this season. I can't even remember playing Overwatch before about Season 7. So, yeah, I know. How do I go from Masters back down to 2600? Isn't that, like, just above Plat? No, I mean, just above... What do you call it? Gold or something? Who knows? Truly terrible. Terrible times for everybody involved. Boosted by placements? No, I think I placed at, like, 2800 that season as well. That was triple or quad tank? Yeah, I can't remember. Open my loot boxes. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, 
Excellent. Wow. Well, that was, yeah, that was good. Hope you all enjoyed that. I can't, uh, I can't play, I literally get zero FPS. I mean, not literally, but, uh, I get very much about 25 FPS, so I can't really play. The, the biggest thing I spent my money on, the most money I spent on one object in my puberty was my 4x3 Acer monitor. That's unlucky. Um... The thing I spent my most money on when I was uh, a teenager was some speakers that were boss. What were they? Let me see if I can find the, the speaker types. They were... Bearing a... Oh, what were they? They were like B something A. B... B250A or something like that. Oh, they looked a bit like these speakers. They weren't quite this. But, uh, it was something like these kind of speakers, and they were like 200 quid each, and I bought two of them, and they were beautiful. Because I had an electronic drum kit, and, you know, whenever you hit the bass pedal, it's an incredibly low sound, so you'd need, like, fairly decent, like, 20, 50 watt speakers at least to be able to handle them. Yeah, it was like the B212, something like B212A. Solid. Well, let's just type something that totally isn't that. Eh, wasn't quite this, but it was really similar to this. Anyway, they've. Uh, I bought them when I was like 16, and unfortunately, after eight years of use, the treble. I, I I took them to uni as well, and so they're just covered in like alcohol stains and everything because we just set them up and have them blasting, like absolutely blasting music. It's like being in a club whenever you're at a house party, and then. Um, and then, obviously, there was just alcohol spill all over them. Uh, and the, the treble got blown out on one of the speakers, so it doesn't really work anymore. But, yeah. Did I ever record with a band? Yeah, I recorded some stuff. I actually did uh, stuff myself. Like, I acquired Cubase. I'm not going to say that I bought it legally. But my grandpa had a copy of it. That, uh... Let's say it was probably legal, I don't know. And, um, yeah, recorded a, a bunch of songs like myself because I play guitar and I play drums and I can kind of sing and you can auto-tune voices anyway. And then, um, what else? I learned a bit of bass just so that I could put some bass down on uh, some of the tracks. And I used to play a keyboard in my youth, so I know how to play some basic chords and stuff. But I can also, I like, I have a vague grasp of how to use MIDI. So I would, like, MIDI input some keyboard over the top of it. Sure. We've heard you sing, you cannot. Mate, auto-tune, innit? If they're nice speakers, you can easily get them repaired. The other thing is, I'm not going to transport them from the UK to... I mean, they're in my loft at the moment, but I'm not going to transport them to LA anyway, so... It's not worth it. It's an unfortunate thing about living in a totally different continent, is that it just costs... It literally would cost me more to transport them than it would to just buy new speakers. This is where we kind of see the most innovation. A lot of the game we see now being played with three tanks, three supports. What did I study in uni? I studied... Oh... Actually, I think I have a copy on my phone of a song because my grandpa um, decided recently, he got a, a bee in his bonnet about recording She Will Be Loved by Maroon 5. And unfortunately, if, if any of you know the song, she, she <coughs> literally impossible to hit that note. So it brought it down a tone. So it was in like E flat or something. Um, and, uh, it's, yeah, it was still tragic, but I think that's about the only, um, song that I still have that's, uh, that I recorded stuff off. Voice of a Kangaroo, pretty much. Imagine me being your doctor, you would, you'd be, you'd be lucky to have me as a doctor, Perm. 
Okay. Nice from Rhea. Nice displacement. Voice of a sideshow. That's pretty sick, Zombo Tech. When am I going to US? Don't really know, but hopefully soon. I knew to Overwatch League how the map's chosen. Uh, so there's a set amount of maps that are available for each stage. So it's predetermined by the league. Uh, so there's three of each type, I think. So there's three control, three uh, escort, three hybrid, and three assault available for stage one. And then it's randomly... It's not randomly, but it's like selected ahead of time for each match. So the teams know which map they're gonna or which maps they're gonna be playing on. So they always start out on a control, so it can be either Nepal, Ilios, or Busan for stage one. For stage two, it'll probably be different and definitely at some point throughout the season you'll see Junkertown and Lijan. My my bedside manner was was uh second to none. Actually, my bedside manner was really stiff and formal at the beginning, and then I kind of chilled out a little bit. Rhea's, um, Rhea went for another displacement on players from Gladiators that time. In the first fight, it worked out. In the second fight, it doesn't really find anything, and both... Uh, Bissi and Gushu went uh, a little too aggressive at the same time, trying to capitalize on anybody that Rio would have booped out of position, and they end up dying. Into watches, Jesus, Macandam. Could you pick two more expensive hobbies, please? Okay, rally, disengagement. That's really nice. So, they attempted to set up a Bash Shatter there. Listen to this. Someone in the front row there is actually going to blow their larynx out. If, if, if this somehow gets back to you... Uh, sounds like young woman in the front row. Please, for goodness sake, keep control over your voice. Uh, you are going to damage yourself. It's not even like just screaming. It's like that hoarse sound where it's like, ah! you know, where it's like you can feel the damage you're doing to your throat. Bloody hell, that sounds horrible to listen to. It feels like it's hurting me just listening to it. So hydration goes for a bash shatter uh, attempt there, but doesn't get anything for it. Oh my god, we have to listen to this again. Oof. It's called a glottal stop. That's not called a glottal stop. A glottal stop is uh, is when you um, use the larynx to make like a, a like a percussive sound, right? A glottal stop is not screaming. Alright. Pin attempt. They could probably back out here and reconnect with Gusha. They they shouldn't try and fight this. Like if they just back out, delay the point a little bit, and make sure they play passive until Gusha's there. No, instead they haven't. Oh, Rhea's gonna commit that. Mm, okay. Gobby's gonna have a big advantage in terms of the grab availability. 50%. Alright. So they can take control of the top here. Try and set up for a shatter. 
If things go south a little bit, they've got the barrier to work with as well. And then they've got grav. And if they get counter graved at any point after the fight kind of dissolves, then they have trance. Or they can try and use both support ults aggressively. Discord orb goes away, he's broken line of sight for long enough. Get on the point. Void's taking a lot of poke. Grav is forward. Explain to me why IDK uses his barrier here. I, if you think you're going to take a lot of damage going aggressive on gladiators, then fine. You just, just stay there. Just be passive, whatever. Shaz forces a transcendence as well. But why does IDK use this barrier? Don't know. Ushua still manages to block that, but Rhea gets demacked. And they've wasted both of their support ultimates. And got nothing. Okay, that, that was just horrible from Spark. IDK, oh my goodness. <laughs> Stop, please. Ay, ay, ay. Do I think Crystal has a place in this lineup? Not in this meta, but in future metas, yeah. It's not really a good response to Transcendence, though. Like, you want to use that sound barrier in a fight where you can actually use it to get aggressive onto everybody else, but... So that was just bad from IDK. Nice engage. A lot of damage to uh, Bitsy. But now they have to back off. Hangzhou able to hold the ground. Oh, nice. IDK, nice boop. It's much, much better pick for Spark. Mm, they really need to play around Godsby. Don't know why they're not playing around Godsby. But okay. Just still playing around Gooseway. Raw did a lot of work when they played against, uh, who was it, Paris, with his primals on this map. Shaz is, so Transcendence Force from Shaz, because Gusri was aggressive on him, alone. That gives Spark a large advantage, but, okay. What happens there? I'm just looking at the top of the screen, looking at the ults, like, okay... Baby is going to be able to use trans, and then Gushu is going to get his primal, and they're going to be able to win this. Where's Baby? Baby is over there, over around this side, but isn't going aggressive with the with the trans. I don't know, man. I don't know. Because they got such an early kill on Decay at the beginning of the previous fight, they should know that Bebe is way ahead of Decay and can afford to use that trance. Okay, don't know. Don't know. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen... Uh, if you guys haven't seen um, Oversight yet, I thought it was a really great episode. Um, I'm not just saying that because I was on it. I actually thought it was really fun. Uh, had a lot of very funny moments with Monty and Thorin. And Peak was uh, pretty interesting as well. He's got some, uh, like, opinions. But they're definitely backed up by a lot of uh, detailed watching of Owl as well. Um, and he's a smart guy. And so I thought it was a pretty funny episode if you want to go and watch that. And I was... We were all throwing in some spicy opinions. And we talked about a lot of the bad teams as well. So, things got fairly brutal without meaning to be particularly brutal. So, would recommend. Roll with a nice primal again. 
And they're going to commit to this with the sound barrier? Mm, that's a thonker to me. I think that's going to end up with a loss. Gladiators have their trance. Okay, Godsby is going to have a free... Oh, Gushwe found that pick. And they flip the point. Gushwe finds another pick with his primal? What the hell? What an odd fight. What a strange fight. Where were they? Gladiators have such weird fights. I mean, when I was watching when I was watching their game against London just now, there was a load of fights where I was like, oh, don't worry, they've got this. And then they just split up and players die all over the place and they end up losing. For both teams though, for London as well. Oh, that's just a classic uh, Graf Bomb combo though. A lot of damage from Gushua as well. Gushua nearly has another primal. So does Raw though, to be fair. Well, Graf Bomb combo for Gladiators. Nothing to block it from Hangzhou. And both teams have primal available in this fight. So, although Gladiators should have a big advantage, Gushua could... Gushua could... Gushua. Gushua. Could just clutch. Gushua. Uh, okay, so Gushu just gets uh, killed anyway. Spark saving their ults. Both teams gonna have trance in the next one, but Gushu is gonna have his uh, his ultimate. This primal has to do a lot of work. But the longer they drag the fight out, the better it will put Godsby in a position. Godsby's Zarya has looked pretty weak actually over the course of this whole season. Which I'm not particularly surprised with, but um, it is interesting that Spark was so highly rated when they don't have kind of a mental uh, Zarya player. Okay, good Swiss Primal didn't really get much done, but they did manage to isolate hydration towards the end of that. So, still get a pick. Oop, boop. Not gonna find anything. Decay dies. Both teams use Grav. IDK also has his beat. Oh, bye bye. Hydration gets whip shot. Raw should get focused down here. Raw could still clutch. Godsby has to be careful not to get booped off. Okay, Godsby gets into secret. Make sure that he can't get booped anywhere. Watch out for this. Oh, great body block from Hydration. Hydration body blocked with Wrecking Ball there so that Godsby couldn't get into Dark. And they got that pick. Mm. It's kind of insanely scrappy, but Hangzhou did have an advantage there most of the way. There is no way that Gushue is correct, guys. Get the fuck out of here. Gushue obviously has some huge hype coming from Overwatch World Cup. Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason that they had so much hype coming in, though, pump up the volume, is because they were owning people in scrims, I think. Well, place does Shadowburn have on Paris? Don't really know yet. He's probably their best Farah player. I mean, he's definitely their best Farah player, in my opinion. And he's... You know, he's an okay Genji and... Junkrat and some other stuff, so... It's possible we could get to a Farah meta, like Farah Sombra could be pretty powerful in the next... Um, in the next... Meta? Next patch? To be able to deal with um, goats and stuff, so it's possible that they run him on something like that. It's Gushi. I watched an interview. Solid. I don't believe you. What do you mean, Gushi? Gushi. I like the aggression coming out from Spark though. A lot of the time they... I think when they play with... 
uh, I don't think it's necessarily just with no smite though, but just a lot of the time they look passive and scared and like they're nervous. But they haven't looked nervous so far this game. They've looked like they're being pretty decisive. Ah! Doubtfire is going to be better with Batista in the mix. Uh, don't know. Depends if Batiste can be used well in some kind of composition. You might not be able to get good value out of Batiste because it might just be better to run other healers. And Batiste doesn't sync very well with Zen and Zen's so powerful so... Who did that kind of catch with? Decay? Can't find that though. Nice body block. He's just got to back off. That's really nice. I think that was... Uh, was that a bash from Betty? No, maybe not. No, it wasn't. Oh, it was a boop. Yeah, it was a boop from my DK. Raw didn't take the projected bubble early enough. Oh, rather, Decay didn't give the projected bubble early enough. And so Raw got booped. And, uh... Ah! Shield wasn't there. Why is Batiste not great with Zen? Uh, because he doesn't offer consistent healing. Or peel. I mean, I might be totally wrong, it's very difficult to predict metas, but he just doesn't look like he has great synergy with Zen. Zen needs someone to protect him. I don't think Batiste is that great at protecting. I think Batiste is like another diveable hero. Like, if you're playing against dive, you can't really dive a Mercy or a Lucio very well. Because Mercy can, like, zip away and fly and shit. And the Lucio can... Zip away, but also boop you. So, I'm pretty sure you could. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could dive Batiste and Zen if they were in a duo together. Nice to play it from Spark so far. Immortality field, not good at protecting. I mean, sure, but. If you're using Batiste and you're using Immortality Field to protect your Zen, I think you are probably going to lose. Because the Immortality... Oh, is that the is that the Spark fan that's uh, blowing her vocal cords out? <laughs> this, uh... This woman who works on, um... Who, who works as an admin, I keep seeing clips of her like when the light shone in her face and like when she's like making a uh, fucking what do you call it like a i don't know an o shape or whatever with the fingers and whatever uh she's like actually a meme already and i swear i didn't really see her that much last season so i don't know whether she's new or something but she's <laughs> she makes me laugh whenever i see the clips of her uh, i want to i want to go and talk to her when i'm in la that is the right person, right? I think it is. I think it's the same person. The other rat threw, threw a dab too. Yeah. She's the halftime shark of Owl. She got clipped onto Reddit and responded? Really? Mm, they kind of got rolled though. Yeah, stop being so horny on main people. She got what? Reddit pla- Okay, alright, we've got to explore this. Referee gets a beam to the face. <laughs> This was so funny. Oh, don't buffer. Don't buffer. Don't go back to sexualizing Bren. Exactly. Exactly. 
was in healing throughout this whole <laughs> it's just something about I don't know I find it so funny I don't know why is that so funny it's a facial expression I think she's stood there with such a like Little smile, she's just going around a day, she's just like, dum -da -dum, dum -da -dum, no problem. First man, uh, <laughs> it's the way she goes from like, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it creases me. Uh, she does look a bit like an NPC, maybe that's what's funny about it. She's like chilling as if she's like, yeah, like. Like an NPC in the back of a game, and then suddenly it's like, yeah. <laughs> I think I also find it funny because I've done that a lot of times. Those lights are insanely bright. Like I think they might blind you if uh, if you just look directly into them. Uh, so then she replied, "Is this really what I'm going to be rem remembered for?" Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid it is. It was so funny. <laughs> is she a, is she work for Blizzard then? Do the admins work for Blizzard? Like, are they actual Blizzard employees? And that's their full-time job? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know that. Light mode Reddit? Yeah, yeah, I do. I use light mode Reddit. Yep. Okay. No, no, she is lost. Jesus Christ. Stop, please. Could you compare the Gusre Gusre? It's supposed to, right, the way that I'm trying to remember it is it rhymes with yeah. Gusue. Gusue. It rhymes with yeah. 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 Gusue. 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 Yeah. Gusue. Okay, anyway. 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 What were you guys saying? Uber chain, thank you. 23 months. Man, I think I need a haircut. Maybe I should try the shampoo. Who that feels good? Oh no, my hair's fallen out. That is great. <laughs> thank you, Uber chain. Could you compare the Guthrie Nosmite situation with the Wuhial Fury situation in London? One has synergy with the other tank, but the other is clearly more talented. No, I don't think so. I think. Um, I don't even think that that was particularly true for Wukial Fury. I mean, I haven't really noticed that Nosmite and Rhea have more synergy than Gusue and Rhea. I, I don't think that's an argument for having Nosmite. I think... Uh, Nosmite looks less comfortable on Winston. Uh, but I think previously the communication... I think they did an interview with Gusue recently. Now, I just said Guthwe. The Goose. I can't even call him the Goose because there's, uh, there's a Goose on the other team. Anyway. Ah, Jesus. I'll call him Jesus. I'll just call him Craig from now on. The, the thing is, I think normally... Uh, they did an interview with Craig afterwards. And Craig said that... The Hangzhou Spark had had communication issues whenever it was Craig in the lineup, rather than No Smite. Um, but presumably they fixed some of those. I think he said something like he'd been learning more Korean as well to be able to communicate with them a little bit better. So there you go. So I, I do think that they should be running Craig most of the time. <laughs> I can't call him Craig. I can't call him Craig. All right. <clears throat> I have been trying, Uber Chain. I've been trying super hard. Gusue. Gusue. I the problem is, I'm 
also inventing in my head what I think it should sound like because I've forgotten what it's originally supposed to sound like. So I also, someone was trying to teach me the difference between sh, which is like sh, it's like at the front of your mouth, sh, and sh, which is at the back of your mouth, sh, sh. And I think those are two different characters or something, or two different sounds in Mandarin, but uh, I, I don't know which one Gushua uses. And so now I've started saying goose, like at the front of my mouth, and I I don't know which it's supposed to be at all. So all I'm going to do is call him Gushe. So I'm going to use the normal sh, sh, and I'm going to say Gushe. And after that, I don't care anymore. I'm not having this discussion every time I say his name. I'm just going to call him Gushe. There's only so much time I can spend trying to pronounce his name. Alright. Big Goose is riding around the top trying to get a boop on someone. Oh, I found a boop on Go Godsby. They were literally waiting for Big Goose to go on that boop run. Hello? Did I just get called out? I wasn't even listening to them because Matt and Mitch missed the entire first part of this. And then they're like talking about me overcomplicating things while they don't even realize what's happening. They don't even realize that Big Goose is going on the flanking adventure of his life trying to boop him off. And listen, what are they saying? Calling me out. Wait, I missed the opening. For the spark, they're going to stick with Gushue here for map number two. So usually you see them kind of sub some of these players in and out. They're going to stick with Gushue. He's playing well. He's going to roll him out here on Hollywood. Don't you think this is a good idea for a yes. team that's trying to find their identity? Yeah, I mean, making a decision. So they're talking decision, about right? between so Gushue and Nosemite. Just seeing them commit to something is better than just seeing them oh they said making a decision is better than no player, decision like you start getting subbed in and out you see everybody else getting subbed in and out you start looking around like okay does anyone have any clue what's going on here like so question everything matt morello deeper thoughts in the marinara's trench ladies <laughs> you know it's, sometimes sometimes it's not that that deep sometimes you know it's just kind of how it is on face value right no need to overcomplicate things so that's for sideshow over the top side I don't overcomplicate things. It's a complex game. It's complex. All right. Anyway, now that I've been roasted and I've set the volume to 69%, let's move on with our lives. So, yeah, pretty huge boop there from Big Goose onto, uh, onto Godspeed as Big Goose just flies through the palm trees at the back. Isn't marinaris like a, a sauce that goes on pasta? What is the actual trench called? Like the deepest trench in the world? Is it the Mar Mariana or something? Mariana. Did he say marinara? Uh, and I said Mariana. That's, that's a classic. <laughs> yeah, the Macarena. Yo, thank you for the the resub as well. Five months in a row, six months total. It's Savandi. He's back. Box with headphones, gang. Yes, fam. Yes. All right. So they managed to displace Godspeed from the high ground, but then Godspeed is gonna just go back up to the high ground, and they're gonna demek void. Uh, Big Goose is going to go for a boop again, though, and Godsby dies. So, Gladiator should be able to win this next engagement. And honestly, it looks like nobody's paying attention to Big Goose. Big Goose, I think, is... You know how uh, Atlanta were punishing crews? And yeah, you're right, I'm not wearing a t-shirt underneath this jumper. 
but I've got an itchy chest. Um, you know the way that they were kind of putting a lot of pressure on Cruz early on in the fights? I think you can easily do the same stuff to Big Goose. Sexy. Sexy. What happened here? Did they all just leave Raw? Why did they leave Raw? Why didn't they move together? Very weird. Very weird. I don't know. I don't know why Raw didn't go with them. I don't know why they didn't take high ground or something. Or try and kill Godsby as he was respawning or something. This is interesting positioning as well for your diva, Because it really can uh, screw up an aggressive team if they try and go over to point. You can get a lot of boops out of... Uh, you know... Boot people out of position. Void gets a lot of people down onto the low ground there. Ghost is going to have to go down with them. He has Discord Orb. Both barriers are used. Ooh. Nice from Hydration. Hydration jumps in front of Gooseway and manages to block the, uh, the pin. Because that would have definitely won the fight for Hung Shou. Hmm, that's very mistimed by Rio with the defensive self-destruct. I think he was trying to peel for Gusue to make sure the Void couldn't get the kill, or make sure everybody else couldn't follow up, but it was just like, Void was already in, and the rest of the team was already out, so it didn't really do anything. Hmm. Uh, sloppy from both teams there, honestly. Sloppy from both teams. The next evolution of goats is teams getting really good at zoning out enemy Lucios. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely possible. I mean, you can't commit too many resources to the Lucio, but certainly these like really aggro Lucios, like Big Goose and Cruz, um, you definitely can. Like some Lucios only go for the aggression in the middle of team fights, and then you can't really punish them. But uh, some go for it like right at the beginning and try and set up plays, and those you definitely can abuse. Okay. Pretty nice. I've got an itchy calf. Roar is really out off uh, from the rest of Gladiators, actually. It's been a recurring problem for them over the last couple of weeks. I think Roar is... Uh, a big weak point for the LA Gladiators not just in terms of his individual play but he just doesn't seem like he's on the same page as everybody else that was weird that Decay killed himself oh he just was bashed and taken super low fair enough Slime is definitely not like uh, Slime doesn't set up the fights. Slime just goes aggressive in the middle of fights. <sighs> That's nice. That is really nice. Very well timed. Yeah, I think Fisher is better than Raw. But I also think that Fisher's uh, very uncoordinated with Soul as well. But I think Soul's. I think that's the rest of Soul's fault. I think that's like uh, Flutter and Munchkin's fault. Not so much fishes. Alright. Grab available for Spark. Nice. Nice block. Good bubble by Decay. They can really start to overwhelm. Gosby's grab gets eaten as well. So things are going really well for Gladiators. A lot of damage as well. They just need to find a target. Pressure out the bubbles. Transcendence used, so Gladiators need to back off. Hmm, Decay does die. But I think they can still win this fight. Oh no, wait, what the fuck? Why was Big Goose so deep? Let's go back and watch this. Okay, so the Transcendence is used at the same time as the Self-Destruct. They back off. Okay, Decay thinks that he's in a safe location. He's trying to hide behind that pillar. What the heck is Big Goose doing back here? Did he get bashed or something? Don't know, he's just in the car. Very weird. Okay, well, only catches uh, only catches Raw and Hydration, and obviously himself, with the sound barrier. 
Well, if Big Goose hadn't used his... Um, if Big Goose hadn't used his sound barrier and got caught out, if Big Goose had managed to back out with the rest of the team and then could re-attack with the sound barrier, I think that fight could have still been winnable. Um, but uh, wildly out of position there. Obviously, as a result of the self-destruct, but even so, you should be... Uh, you should be able to get back with the rest of your team. Big Goose does go on wild flanks. I actually think Goose is super abusable in this meta, the way that he plays. He tries to go for a lot of big plays, but I think it's uh, I think it's pretty easy to catch Goose out. A bit too aggro. Speaking of finished Lucios, I think Massa plays it way better than Goose does at the moment. Nice trance from Shaz, but trance is also available for Baby. They need to get out of there. Gladiators need to... Uh, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Void just spinning. They actually, instead of instead of backing off, look, like when I called for them to back off, as the sound barrier comes through, and then the Earth Shatter. So they, I didn't even realize that they've managed to find Gushui back here. Ah, oh, Gushui, I keep calling him fucking Gushui. Gushui. <sighs> So they've managed to whip shot him inside as well. So I didn't see this. So I was like, oh, you guys need to run away from the... Like, Goose is going to be coming for you with the trance. <laughs> it's not, of course. He's he's down there. So they can all just kill him. <laughs> so, unlock, unlock. Really nicely played by Gladiators. Just get isolated and push them out of position. I don't know whether Panka would be better. I think you'd probably just stick with Raw, but do some uh, specific coaching with him to. Fi I mean, first of all, you got to figure out why he's so uh, out of position with everybody else. I imagine it's because he's not actually making the calls. Most of the main tanks make the calls, and so they can't really be that far out of position because it's their decision where the team is going. But if you have a main tank that's having to react rather than uh, be the leader, then you're more likely to be out of sync. Grab going to be available for both sides. Both sides have trance as well for it. Rally engagement, but they managed to back off. Hydration does ha doesn't have his to be able to go in, but and they haven't really got much out of it. They just got the rally armor, and that'll chip itself away. Ooh, nice. Baby uses that. But as he should fall as well, they can just get aggressive with the sound barrier. Yeah. And they... They find Godsby, they're just rotating around the map, trying to find somebody out of position. They find Godsby and grab him and kill him just before he can do anything. So. I don't know who makes the calls actually, Patters. I'm just assuming that it's not Raw because he looks like he's reacting rather than leading. And I doubt that it's Raw because he's a new addition. Oh! He's a new addition to the team. Yeah, Gladiator's only wins over Shock. It is pretty interesting, isn't it? But I think uh, they came into that with a really good game plan. And Shock failed to adapt. Yeah, Paris did. So, did someone ask about the Paris Atlanta game? Yeah, I don't think it was necessarily just Cruz's aggression. Cruz's aggression was like he didn't calm it down, which he definitely needed to. But I just think, as well, Paris were making a ton of mistakes. I think Soon had a very poor game. Bubbles and Gravs were not on point and was failing to generate charge at anywhere near the rate that Defran was. Uh, ben Best was quite frequently um, getting abused because they were using resources on other people. Like, they had to use Armor Pack on Crews a lot, and they had to... Uh, uh, they're going to kill Cosby, though. This is fine. Uh, 
Nice from IDK. Heads up play. Okay, now Spark need to go aggro. Uh, were, I had some other thoughts about Paris as well. You can go back and have a look at my VOD where I VOD reviewed Paris versus Atlanta, or I talk about it on Oversight a little bit as well if you go want to go and uh, watch Oversight. I think maybe two-thirds of the way through we discussed Paris versus Atlanta. Wow. Bessie just gets caught out before they can pop the transcendence. Godspeed's got uh, some decent position, but Decay's is much better. These right clicks are just going to do so much damage. <laughs> Sorry, Solpo. Sorry, dude. What rank am I? Diamond, my friend. But I know a lot about Overwatch. But knowing a lot about Overwatch does not mean that you're a good player. Uh, bubbles get traded. Grab bomb combo. They don't really have anything to be able to deal with it. Yeah, nice. Roll with a nice pen. It's well executed. Will I join the Owl cast again someday? I certainly will. One day. One day, my friends. I think Paris made a lot of mistakes in that game. They didn't look like themselves. It was pretty uncharacteristic. They looked like they were tilted, actually. <sighs> Gushway with a lovely counter shatter. Actually lovely counter shatter. And that's going to force out both support ultimates from LA Gladiators. Wowie! That looked like a big throw with both of the support ults being used as well. So look, Gushwick comes over to the side. So Raw sees an opportunity. They actually tried to get the boop anyway. Like it was a boop shatter, but eh, it probably would have caught everybody anyway. But then because Gushwick has been booped out, everybody that tries to follow up, Gushwick counter shatters. And uh, Hydration and Raw... Probably both going to die. So both support ults get used at exactly the same time from Gladiators. That's uh, that's what we call in the business value. Big value from Spark. Okay, they should easily win this. They're just trying to catch someone off guard. But they can't see anybody. And there's no spam. So they should be suspicious. Rally is used. They catch Roar out. It's it's a worthwhile play, though, from Gladiators because they have to make something happen, otherwise they're definitely going to lose. So it's like, that's the right time to try that play, you know? They have to try something. And they don't have an Earth Shadow to try and clutch with. The grab's just going to get tranced, so... It's worth trying something like that. They know they're at a massive ult disadvantage, so... There's nothing you can do other than... I mean, you can slowly lose, or you can have a chance at winning, or maybe a chance of losing very quickly. And the time bank doesn't really matter that much anyway, because there's only, you know, 40 seconds left or something. So I, I like that decision. Big Goose with another boop onto Gushua. But... Nice graph. I assumed Shaz didn't have trance, but Shaz actually did have... Oh, no, Shaz got trance really late. Yeah, yeah, Shaz built his trance actually really quickly there. I thought he would only be on something like 80% now. I don't think it was a fluke that Atlanta beat Paris, but uh, I do think it was a very bad day for Paris. I don't think Paris would normally play that badly. I do think that Atlanta would normally play that well, though. I think it wasn't a fluke that Atlanta played that well. It just... It's a little unfortunate. I think the game would normally have been a lot closer. <sighs> Ooh, really nicely coordinated from Gladiators. Uh, 
I want to look at Shaz's trance here, though. Why do they use Shaz's trance? The trance is there to save Hydration and Decay, who both get Earth Shattered. But the only people that need to stay alive are, is Raw, really. And he's about to... I mean, he had the bubble anyway, so he didn't get Earth Shattered. So I don't think that's necessary. But okay. I don't think that's necessary. Cap out. Kill, kill, kill. What do I think about Jexa over Toby? Um, haven't really seen Toby in a long time, so I don't know how good Toby is anymore. Um, I think Jexa's been playing okay. I said that he was like one of the top five Lucios at the beginning in the first week, but I don't think that anymore now that I've seen more footage of everybody. I think like Massa, Slime, Animo. Moth. The last thing you want is right half. You should be broken to force you to go aggressive. Raw wants a shield right now. He might have a chance to save his team. Maybe Cruz as well. He only had that one game where he was getting really punished, but usually he can get a lot of value out of it. It depends whether people keep punishing Cruz. I think his play is very talented. It's just very aggressive and he needs to be able to turn it down. Huge damage onto Raw, trying to get aggressive in that. Like, what is this communication, though? Like, what the fuck is going on here for Gladiators? Okay, so they see that Godsby... Let's go through this, like, one part at a time. They see that Godsby uses his bubble here. So they know that Godsby now can't protect himself. So as soon as the bubble comes down, Godsby gets grabbed. Because now Godsby doesn't have his personal, he's going to die. They use Trance, but... They use... They use Trance gets used, and Gushui has his shield there, so Raw needs to be supported if he wants to go aggressive, because otherwise they're just doing, like, so much damage to Raw. Like, the Discord Orb is on him, and he's full thing, full charge. So, either Raw needs to be passive, or Shaz needs to communicate that he's not quite got his Trance, but you can't, you can't let Raw die and then use Trance. really bad communication like how does that even happen raw just assuming that trances are active or raw just being a bot and dying and shaz trying to save him from his bottiness i don't know yeah spark yeah best best possible for spark but nice Neptuno, maybe. IDK has been pretty good as well, yeah. Maybe Neptuno. I've no idea, CJ Gamer. I think Alamo and... Oh, sorry, that's not how you pronounce his name, is it? His name's like Alamo, I think. I think Alamong and uh, Kalex have both been uh, pretty similar. They're like, they're okay. They seem to have a decent idea of how to play uh, Lucio in this meta. Taking control of the right places, denying high ground when they need to. It's actually a Lamau. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, LA Gladiators are just way out of sync. They're doing okay sometimes. Like, sometimes when they have big grav combos, it looks like 
they have a plan and they execute really well. But when they don't have a very clear plan, they look all over the place. Surely Spark don't turn this. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't think Godspeed's had the greatest game so far, honestly. But okay, pretty close. Between both of these teams. Yeah, anyone can do VOD reviews for Al. Alright, let's have a look at this. Half time again. Some insight. Give me some insight, Brent. I got a tasty little clip for you. It actually is going to be breaking down kind of one of the things that Hongzhou do particularly well, which is actually spotting in the middle of team fights what they can do to win it. So the first thing I want to point your attention to, Raw, right there. He's got the Earth Shatter, and they Gladiators, they recognize that this is the way they're going to be winning the fight. The only way they do so is if Hydration uses the Shield Bash ability, which is a, a, an ability of the character he's playing, to kind of disable Gooshway, take away his shield, so they can set up the Earth Shatter, knock them all down, and win the fight. But when you pause it again here, you can see Hydration just got to get behind Gooshway's shield. And Gooshway, in the moment, he notices this. He recognizes it. And this is the one thing that Hongjo are very good at. They're an instinctual team. So Raw's going to be trying to get the Earth Shatter off. Hydration's going to be trying running forward. And Gooshway just backpedals. He just runs backwards. Let's Hydration come Yeah, in. this was nice. They just focus down Hydration. The Earth Shatter from Raw gets no value whatsoever. And you can see it here in slow motion. Perfect placement here from Hongjo Spark. This is the one thing that they really do excel at. And it's one of the reasons they managed to take away this first map. Because control as a game mode is quite chaotic. You know, it's all over the place a little bit. And Hongjo really excel in that kind of environment. That was dope. It was like bobbing and weaving like a boxer. Exactly. Almost. It was really cool. All right. So, you know, going into this matchup. We'll yeah, pretty good. Like pretty good. Spark, and them just spreading themselves too How is Bren doing with his milky bubble farts lately? Still infecting the venue? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I have not sought an update recently, but. I imagine it's still the same. I wonder what the first pick uh, rate of all the Lucios is. Playtime for them, whereas on Gushu's side before this match, it was just 85. So that's Jeez. quite a big difference, actually. Yeah, absolutely huge difference, isn't it? And I think I can understand that is pretty big. I think I think they do look better with Gushu though. If they can, if they've solved the language barrier, they look more decisive when they have Gushu on main tank. You need to be able to set up your team fights particularly well. You need to be able to call and uh, communicate as to when you're going to be using your ultimates. But generally speaking, I have What's the difference between these two guys? Between when Gushu was playing and when Nozmite was playing. Right. I think honestly, it's a much better mm. look for them because I was honestly Gushu's biggest fan. From the Overwatch World Cup, we saw this guy, he played for Team Canada. Second uh, there's player. not much difference statistically. I feel like Raw's been making more mistakes than Gushu over the course of this match so far. The statistics don't really say that much. They're almost dead even on most things. Interestingly, fire strike kills is quite a bit higher for Gusha. Well, guys, that's about it. So, right now, it's tied up 1 1. Who you guys giving the edge going into the second half? I stick with gladiators. I, have gladiators. To stick with gladiators. I think I think generally both teams have to be a little bit more conservative, maybe with their alt uh, usage. I think they were a little bit liberal at times, but I think if uh, gladiators are gonna tie things up, uh, tidy things up rather. Wolf, uh, how's it going, dude? I, I would have to give the advantage to gladiators as well moving forward. Actually, I think Spark won this game, right? I'm not 100% sure. But gladiators look a lot worse than they have done in, uh, or did in week one. They, I, they looked shaky when they played against Paris, honestly. And then they looked shaky in both of these games. I missed the review of Bren's insights. The, review, the Bren's insights was actually good. Okay. 
Okay, let's have a look at this. So Spark are running Rhine defense here. All right. Well, they know that gladiators. I was gonna say they know that gladiators don't run quad DPS, but gladiators might be running quad DPS. I've never seen them run quad DPS. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So Decay is actually not the greatest Widow in the world. I don't think Decay's Widow is that good. And I've never seen Void on Tracer. So I'm not expecting this to be great. Let's see. Discord Orb was on Raw. He hid. Line of Sight is broken. Discord Orb is gone. Just gonna prod a little bit. The K hasn't really hit anybody yet. Just applying a bit of pressure. Which is gonna push back out. They've done a huge amount of damage to Raw. This is where they should be going aggro. Uh, they should be blocking the point at the same time here. Like, okay. Now they're gonna push onto the point. You can also play from bunker as well. That that gives you more point pressure. If you play like inside the hut here. You can um, you can block the point a little more easily. Hey, Rio gets demacked. Decay gets that. Another problem with um, with gladiators running this composition. Okay, maybe it goes down. EMP is available here as well. Another problem with with uh, with gladiators running this composition is that they don't really have that much snowball potential to go into point B. Oh wow, Gushui has to <laughs> Gushui has to just throw himself off the map. Uh, unless the EMP is huge here though, or Decay hits something crazy, it's still really difficult to be able to snowball on B, even with Gushui down. So. I'm not anticipating this being huge. Where's Hydration's cam? He really needs to catch, I don't know, Baby and Gushui together? Baby and Godspeed or Baby and Rhea? Did Baby panic pop that? Where is Baby? Okay, so Baby is there. Oh, so he sees EMP. Did he cancel EMP or something? Does EM does the translocator get broke? Uh, not cancel EMP. Does he cancel the translocator? What does what is this? What is this? What am I looking at here? I don't know the game enough to be able to know what's going on. Did he cancel? Hydration, so Hydration cancels his own translocator to bait out the fact that he's come through the EMP because presumably it gives some kind of noise signal or something. Why don't I use Visor so I can draw? Because my frames go down massively when I use Visor. Does it give a, does it give a noise signal? Is that why he's cancelling it? Or is he cancelling it because it makes this little visual, visual thing? It makes the same visual thing as when you come out of... Or well, not the same, but like it makes a similar visual thing. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I know you can see it being thrown. My question is just like the the only question I have about this play. Uh, first of all, I've never seen this happen before, where someone deliberately cancels their translocator, and I didn't know what it even looked like when you cancelled it. So this is kind of new to me that it even makes that little flash when you cancel it. But I was wondering like why he doesn't just allow it to stay there. But I guess the little flash makes it look much more like the Sombra's actually come through. And yeah, he uh, he cancels it, baits the Transcendence out. So, pretty big. At the same time... Mm, I don't know. I, I really dislike Zenyatta's preemptively using their Transcendence. And I was talking about this in the, um, in the previous... Uh, Sombra matters that happened a long time ago is that if you use your if you use transcendence reactively uh not reactively if you use it beforehand to try and 
you know, preempt the EMP coming through. If you actually do manage to time it perfectly, then fair enough, you've got a, a good chance of being able to win that fight. But you are way more likely to get it baited out. And if you get it baited out, you are totally screwed. If you get EMP'd there, it probably only hits baby, and there's probably a decent chance of still being able to win the fight. But if it gets baited out, and then they just come back in with the EMP, you've got a horrible chance of being able to win that. And so the only time you win if you preemptively trance is if the enemy Sombra is like definitely about to EMP. And the more that Sombra gets played, the more that people try and bait it out of you. So I just really... I think it's so slim. The amount of times... When we were in the previous Sombra method, when it was like <coughs> Apex Season 3, there were way more times that Zens got baited into using Trance than when Zens successfully, preemptively tranced. Which means that as a percentage play, it's better to just not do it, not get baited. So, unfortunate there for Baby, but I really like that. Did somebody clip that and put it on Reddit, like, when the game actually happened? Or is it only just now that people have noticed that this happened? Because I really like this, and I don't think I've ever seen it before. Have any of you guys seen this happen before with Sombras, where they deliberately delete their translocator with that little flash to make it seem like uh, a thingy? Oh, people have noticed it before. Insanely common in Korea. Oh, I see. I've, I've watched it happen in Korea, but I've never noticed them deliberately delete the translocator. I've just never realized that that happened. I thought they were just, I always thought they were just throwing their translocator in. And the Sombras were just, and the Zens were just getting spooked. I'll keep an eye out for it in the future. I didn't realize that Sombras were doing that. Okay, Gladiator should really switch to Sombra Goats, but the problem with Gladiators using this comp is that Hydration is normally a break, so you have to run it without a break. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not great either. Gives you a lot less healing. What a fucking odd fight. What an incredibly strange engagement. So they EMP'd miles away from where gladiators were able to follow up on. So they EMP miles away. It literally only hits Gushue, who's round the corner. And uh, IDK instantly uses barrier. Don't know why Goose uses barrier instantly as well. Why does Goose instantly use barrier? Just to make it even in the fight? But they're, they're running away from everybody. And then Shaz just gets solo grabbed because he's too slow to be able to rotate away from everybody. What a strange fight. They just weren't in position to follow up on the MP at all. Arkinek. This is now an ASMR stream. Do you think Shofar can't play Brig? I think Shofar isn't practiced to play Brig. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Why don't they play Decay and Show 4? I don't know. It makes so much more sense to play Decay and Show 4 if Show 4 has a reasonable break. Uh. But maybe, you know, Show 4 probably just isn't practiced on it. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I need to speak more. Do, 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 do. Okay. So. Whoa, JoJo Overwatch, thank you for the tier one sub, dude. I appreciate it. Okay, trying to get aggressive. Training bubbles. Gets bashed. How is. Wait, what? Did they go from one to the other there? 
Oh no, it was a charge, right. What the fuck is Raw doing? I was like, how did Hydration manage to get aggressive enough so that he could bash Gushua? But it's not, it's a charge and he counterpins. The hell is Raw doing that aggressive? Raw looks honestly like one of the worst Ryans in the league. Like Almeng, Janus, Raw, still investing into this as well, but they didn't have a great way of being able to deal with Gusha. Big Goose got a boop on him, but he's going to be able to come back in this fight. The bash as well on Raw, yeah, it's just they can't do anything about that. They weren't able to put that much damage on Betsy. But also, I mean, the people who were talking about Shofar versus Brig, uh, Shofar versus Hydration. Even if you had, um, even if you had Shofar instead of Hydration in this lineup, it wouldn't solve you playing Sombra Goats really, because you don't really want your Brig to be the Sombra player. The way that they used to do it is that they'd have Void run Zarya and Shofar would run uh, Sombra. But if you had Shofar in instead of Hydration, I mean, who plays the Brig? Yeah, I think uh, the Korean people were telling me that uh, Bazi is actually pronounced Bechi. Or something like that. I, I, I'm probably the worst person to ask in terms of pronunciation. Okay, Gladiators have got point control now though, and they've got a lot more ultimates. Aurora is too aggressive though. But they managed to trade main tanks. Uh, these things are still going okay for them. They still have a lot of these ultimates to be able to use. Shazza's Trance, they've got Grav Bomb combo as well. Godspeed's gonna have to throw in this Grav at some point, but... Yeah, I mean, he throws it in, but it just gets tranced. So there's nothing you can really do about it. And Bessie goes down. This is just a slow clean up and killing the spawners and stuff. What's the next game I'm going to review? If you type exclamation mark schedule into my chat, you will be able to see. It's weird actually that gladiators force Ryan Goats so much on Numbani point A, which I don't know why they do that, but they run Winston Goats here. Which is strange because of the two maps, I would expect, like personally, I think that Winston Goats is, um, I mean, I think you should play Winston Goats on both, but uh, may maybe it's just their opponent actually, they just don't think that London can play the quad DPS comp very well, whereas they're respecting Sparks quad DPS, that would make more sense actually, because that was in the previous series on Numbani. Okay, Winston goes on both sides, just fighting over control of the high ground. Because Raw's Winston isn't even that bad. So if I was Gladiators, I'd be trying to play Winston Goats. Nice armor pack from Bezzy. Nice dive from Raw. What are you what are you talking about, reinforce? Bro, get me on this stream right the fuck now. Yeah, you can do if you want. Give me a call on Discord. Sure 
Yo, what up, my dude? Bro. Bro. Dude, have you been talking shit about my power rankings? No, I haven't. How dare you? I actually haven't. I haven't even... I haven't even you been... Haven't? I haven't even been thinking about you, Jonathan. You're so... Un oh. Your power rankings are so unimportant to me oh. that I've not even been... Not, not even been discussing them. Oh. Not a, not oh, a, that's good. Not one synapse in my brain has been dedicated to thinking about your oh. power rankings. Well, that's better than criticizing it. Okay, <laughs> okay oh. where, where are your power rankings? It's time for me to roast them to pieces. Yo, I put Dallas at six. <laughs> and everyone's freaking out about it. Oh my goodness. I saw your, I saw your top six of the week. Why did you put Jake in your top six of the week, Jonathan? Who else should I put in there? Fucking, uh... Okay, who do I actually think is the best Brig? Um... I think Haxel, but... I think, uh... Okay, so my reasoning for not putting Haxel in... Yeah. ...was that Vancouver only beat the Valiant 3-1, and even then, Haxel isn't even the most important player on that team by far. Doesn't have to be the most important player. He's the best. Well, I showed my metrics, and my metrics was has the most impact on the team. And Mate, Jake clearly is a bit more important on our class. Wasn't that the week that Houston got farmed by NYXL? No, that and, was the week before. And Jake died first in every single fight and just got absolutely fisted. Oh, That's that... not relevant. It was not this week. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Kib, yeah, Kib, See? Kib and people played are well lulling well. in chat. People are fucking lulling in chat. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I haven't thought about this. I've thought about it. I've figured out. I know what my reasonings are and what I'm talking about. And still, you guys are just lulling in chat. Thinking I'm washed up. I'm not washed up. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I see you nodding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, let's find, let's find your power ranking. If well. I wanted to put the best players, I just put NYXL players in there. But that's not fun. What do you mean? What do you mean? Put the NYXL players in there. Axel's better than Libero. Actually, I haven't even even thought about Axel versus Libero because I haven't done vote analysis on Libero's brig. That doesn't really, that doesn't really rustle my Jimmy's side job. Do you think? Uh, do you think NYXL are better than the Titans right now? It's very hard to say. I'd say, I mean, you can't really say it, Sideshow. But honestly, I'm going to take a little doubt of the NYXL because they have been so good in the past. Okay, okay. I can, I can respect and that. I, I just, I just seen very little weakness. They've had a really easy strength of schedule. That was my argument that I told other people and they sort of latched onto that. So I think by the benefit of the doubt, and you're always being so good, you have to sort of just assume that they're better until we actually see any big other like results from games. I'm not going to lie, Johnny. Your, uh, your top six of the week would get farmed. You don't even have an off-tank. That's fair, but that's why Dean doesn't have a tank logo. <laughs> That's true. And he played a bit of Diva on Volskaya. That's so. true. He did play. He played quite a bit of Diva all throughout the series, actually, against Dallas. So why are you giving me shit, bro? Because <laughs> he's not that good on Diva. But his Sombra was really good. I agree with Ding. I agree. I think Dude, uh, Shanghai would get farmed if Ding wasn't on that team. Yeah, Ding was Ding was super good. And people are like, oh well, DM would have made up for it, and it's like maybe, but even then, I don't think. Is this the top three of this week? I feel like I can't even argue with you because I haven't even watched half the games from this week. I've still got like another seven games to watch from this week. So if you look at it, if you read the tweet, it's like max one player per team. And that's oh, right, so. max one player per team. That makes sense. Okay. So I agree with Massa, and I think he would also be the best player on Atlanta to, to take. I agree with Shu. Fair enough. Uh... I could put Ivy instead of Sinatra, but Shock went seven and one, and Toronto lost to New York. So I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. not really fair either. Yeah, I think Sinatra is a decent shout. Decent shout. I would. But uh, sometimes Sinatra also feeds, but not this week. I would. Would definitely have Haxal in there though. Yeah, you know, you gotta you gotta be a bit uh, controversial. I think Jake was super important for Outlaws, and so Jake sort of. 
outweighed Huxel. I mean, I haven't, I I haven't watched the game Twilight against him so yet. Good, yeah, Bumper like, and Twilight are fantastic. So it's like, Huxel is really good, but he doesn't have the same level of impact for his team as much as Jake has for the Outlaws. So that was my reasoning. I feel pretty good about all of these until we get to number six, Dallas Fuel. I feel okay, like... so hear me out. Everyone's saying that Philadelphia should be higher because they only lost with Boom Bap Box out of the lineup. But mm. my, but my, I don't, I don't like that argument as much. Because a no, loss I is agree. A loss. I think and as so well, like, Philly actually oh, did lose as soon as Boombox came Boombox back. Boombox on the bench, and so L, that's an excuse. And I'm like, it's an excuse, but... Oh, Philly, eh. Philly lost to... Dal uh, no, who did Philly lose to when uh, when Mayhem. Boombox was back? No, no, when Boombox oh. was back. Philly lost no. another game. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 F definitely, definitely. No, because they played Washington this week, and they... Won like three one or something. They lost Ilios versus Washington. Versus. Oh yeah, they had a close match against Washington and they looked tragic still. Yeah. <laughs> and people are like, "Oh, they're number five, dude! They're so good." Like, no. Yeah, no, no, no. But that isn't even who I would have at number six. I would have. I think Paris is still up there. I think Paris should be at number six. I think Paris had one bad game, and granted, it was a terrible game. But I think per people are going way too low on Paris immediately. Like I think okay, Paris will bounce what back. What are their notable wins? It doesn't That's matter what I came to. Doesn't what matter what their notable, notable wins? wins are. They haven't had a schedule where they can get notable wins. You can't hold the easy strength of schedule against them. Paris have looked really good. Their individual play is good. Against oh, they looked really good against London with Birdring, and they looked really good against the like, Gladiators. Yeah, yeah, they beat Gladiators two one. A Gladiators that looks like ass. Gladiators oh, didn't man. look like total ass in that game. But they're still... You, can, you can't just still be like, oh, they got... Paris, Paris, look, Paris look way better than Fusion does right now. Sure, in a strict Reinhardt Goats, but that's not really what Philadelphia excels at and what Philadelphia will pay. Yeah, well, they'll buttfuck Philly even if they do run Winston Goats unless Philly get a lot better. I don't know. I and hope I hopefully do get a lot better. Your own power rankings. I will make my own power yes. rankings. In my power rankings, they're lower. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the uh, the top five is pretty set though, at the moment. Bro, Benchmob had London at number five and roasted me like, bro. Who did? Uh, who did he have not in your top five? Show, I guess. I think he had the event before as well. Mm. I think Charger are a good team. I yeah. think Charger won like, the better I don't know teams. where to put them because I don't see Guangzhou necessarily beating some of the lower teams in like a triple trying triple support, but Guangzhou just excels at like DPS stuff. Yeah, the so. DPS was really good and their Sombra Goats is really good as well. Yeah. Okay. Nah, not too much roasting to be done there. Did you post your 11 to 20? You're actually reasonable. No, I didn't, because that's just fans bitching about their teams being 15 instead of 17 or something. It's like irrelevant. <laughs> what is this gift, dude? <laughs> What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find this? Oh my god, it's incredible. His walk, the way that he plants his foot so surely off the side. <laughs> the way he knocks everybody else in. That's one of the greatest gifts I've ever seen. That's essentially you, me and Brent. <laughs> it's me sat on the side. No, that's 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 you sat on the side. To be fair, and then oh, I'm the one jumping in afterwards. <laughs> but it's already gone to shit. <laughs> the blind leading the blind. <laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff. People are livid in my replies, dude. Yeah, I'm just reading it. But like, what what do they think it should be instead? No, they they rate Philly so high. 
Yeah, I think Philadelphia have the potential to be a really good team. And their Winston Goats was good, but it hasn't been good in the last two weeks. The game against Justice was shockingly discord, uh, uncoordinated. And then week two was terrible for them when they were playing with Thingy. This that is madness fine. as well. What is? That the, um, the, what's he called? Macho Man interview. Is it Macho Man or is he Randy Savage? I can't even remember. Is that the same person? Oh, yeah, same place, oh. person. Okay. Vancouver, like, why not number one? And I'm like, I can't be with this. I, yeah, I think I, I would personally put Vancouver number one. I think what notable wins does NYXL have, Jonathan? That's the problem. And I can't argue with you why New York should be number one. It's I, purely based have on you seen, Dude, have you seen the maps for NYXL against Shock? Have you seen the maps? It's actually such a fat game. All of the maps are shit. Please tell me it's Busan. Okay, it's Busan to start, where San Francisco Shock just frequently throw by putting random people in. Or like, it's not random, right? But they run Smurf because they want to run uh, Wrecking Ball more. Oops, what the fuck have I just done there? Hit F5. And then they put Striker in because they want to run him on Widow. And then they're going to put Rascal in as well. So they're going to have that really weird team on Basan. And I think NYXL are going to clap them. But NYXL have never won Numbani this year. They're not and 2 on Numbani. And they had that <laughs> shocking <laughs> fucking... Points. No, exactly. They lost to the Boston Uprising on Numbani. <laughs> and then they fucking got full held by Seoul. So... I'm fully expecting Numbani to just be an absolute clapback by San Francisco Shock. And then Volskaya, uh, New York threw that against Valiant. Like, San Francisco Shock, I don't think I've ever played Volskaya. No, wait, maybe they have. I think they've only won Volskaya or something. But NYXL threw Volskaya by playing possibly one of the worst DPS compositions into Winston Goats. Like, they played quad DPS into Winston Goats and threw against Valiant. So, we could be in a situation where NYXL just get absolutely clapped on the middle two maps, because it looks like they just don't really understand how to play Numbani first point, and uh, and fucking Volskaya A as well. I think they actually got full held by Valiant on on Volskaya because they tried to run quad DPS into Winston Goats and just ran it for the entire four minutes and then Dorado fucking NYXL lost that to Defiant although they did win I think they're one and one on Dorado but they lost it to Defiant and Shock have never played it before so it's not like they even have like game footage to work on so the fucking map pool is just like a disaster for for, for both teams in different ways so I think we could have just a weird weird game here <laughs> I think Shock actually Shock are one and one, but the team they lost to on Volskaya was uh, was Titans, right? And they actually played Titans pretty close on Volskaya. So, so let me ask you this: Do you feel good about Shock in this game? I, d I know I still don't feel good because that's uh, a problem. Yeah, because Shock have like such a set style, and it's or, and we've already seen two teams be able to read and defeat it. And I think NYXL are pretty good at being able to read other people's styles and like abuse them so i expect they'll be able to do the same kind of stuff where they really abuse like sinatra's aggression and how just just like any out of position plays from shock um yeah that was worse we the most is that just new york excelsior are so good at forcing mistakes and then punishing mistakes and sometimes san francisco's positioning is just fucking all over the place and like violet exposes themselves in opera dies so much yeah uh, first in fights and it's like I don't really trust Shock to win. Yeah, you have to you have to be very clean to win against NYXL, I feel. And Shock aren't really clean. But the other thing as well is, do you really trust NYXL to be able to deal like to be able to play slow and controlled against Shock? I feel like Shock are just going to run in run in there and like force NYXL to play really fast. And we haven't seen NYXL play fast. NYXL so play a lot worse when they play fast. Yeah, sure, but I still feel like a reason why NYXL were so good last year is that their play style holds up so well consistently in that 
I don't think disengaging versus San Francisco versus disengaging versus Seoul Dynasty is going to be a lot different. I still feel like they can get value yeah, from the yeah, passive yeah, yeah. play style. Yeah. And but, it's like, but it's going to be the, harder, but... It's against still. a lot of the teams, they like slowly take position and teams don't abuse that at all. Like they don't try and force NYXL out of position. Whereas I think Shock are good enough that they're going to actually force them out of position. And I, I don't know, man, like the fact that I could see this being a 3-1 game either way. If if New York, if New York do still suck at Numbani and Volskaya, then this could easily be a 3-1 for Shock or a 3-2 for Shock. And if NYXL... And if if N if it goes the way that I think, I think it could be like a three two or a three one for NYXL. I I think NYXL are probably gonna win, but I could I could honestly see it being a three one and look like a bit of a clapping for shock. Like people might come out of this game thinking NYXL are mad overrated if they just shit the bed on Numbani and Volskyr again. Yeah, um... it's the, it's honestly great for NYXL that it wasn't Horizon Lunar Colony because they look <laughs> like a fucking joke on that map as well. And this like, upcoming week is gonna determine power rankings so well. Like there's Atlanta Gladiators, Paris Vancouver, Guangzhou Gladiators. There's so many good matches here. Yeah, there Paris, are a lot of good ones. It's like it's gonna help us figure out what's going on because my power rankings this week is essentially assuming so many like potential matchups. That it's hard to draw conclusions, and this next week is going to be a big pog. Yeah, next week's got some sick games. But I don't know. I could see. I think it comes down to. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is Shock also have to play against Paris this week. So Shock actually do have to prepare for both games, whereas yeah. NYXL only have to prep against Shock. So I think that could actually make a pretty big deal, a uh, big difference as well. NYXL can focus on the maps that they have to play, NYXL can just focus on like. Because NYXL are going to set up and then try and abuse Sinatra and Super's aggression. And Sinatra and Super are going to have to play aggressive, otherwise they're going to yeah. lose. So it feels like if NYXL play it right, they should win. And so I think they're the favorites. Yeah, I feel that way too. But also, if they get it wrong, like if they fail to read and adapt to San Francisco's aggression, then they could just get clapped. I feel like it'll either be a close win for NYXL or a clapping for the shock, which is super weird. No, but that's how this season has been so far. We it has, so yeah. I'm discussing predictions and discussion, discussing analysis, but if you don't turn up on the day when you need to, like, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's like, no one really thinks that Atlanta should 4-0 Paris. It's just Paris didn't turn up and Atlanta played well. And nah, like, nah, listen. All of Atlanta's fans knew that they were going to absolutely clap Paris, and they're basically just going to win every game from here on out, and they're going to win the fucking stage one as well. And actually, Atlanta are the greatest team ever, and it's just that you're just a shithead analyst who doesn't like Dufran, and that's why you're not giving them any credit. So why the fuck do you keep underrating Atlanta side, Joe? Whoa, sorry. I just got taken away there for a moment. It was like I got transported into one of my Twitter DMs over the last week. Fuck, my heart's pounding. Yeah. Uh, where am I? Where am I? I put them at four, and I had Atlanta fans being like, why didn't you put them at three or a shock? And I'm like, can't you just be happy? I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Why aren't you satisfied? Like, oh, my. Like, Ooh. genuinely, I had a ton of fans saying that they... they uh, I was away on holiday. Actually, I can't show you guys my DMs, but let me... Uh, let me Two seconds. I had, uh, I had some. I was away, but I was checking the scores, and so I saw that Atlanta forward Paris, and I immediately had a couple of DMs on Discord. Okay, that said stuff like, "What are your thoughts on Atlanta Rain versus Paris Eternal?" I knew Rain was going to win. <laughs> I was like, oh my, wow, you saw that in your crystal ball? <laughs> How? Like, there was no indication, I think, that Atlanta Rain was a better team than Paris from the games that we'd seen already. Like, they were making way more mistakes than Paris were, but they improved and Paris didn't turn up. And yeah. it ended up being an absolute clapping. But uh, I had another one as well that was like, uh, 
I don't know, something like I absolutely called it ahead of time or whatever. But did you fucking know you're you're an Atlanta fan. Of course you called it ahead of time. You always say Atlanta are gonna win. <laughs> yeah. It's, so yeah. yeah. Uh it's whatever, it's frustrating. Alright, I'm gonna share my screen with you if you wanna take part in this Discord. No, I no? actually have shit to do and it's my I see. quote unquote day off. So <laughs> Enjoy your day off. Yes, I will not watch Overwatch for now, anyway. There you go, I have to catch anyway, up on all of these. It was nice talking to you. Nice, nice, nice chat, dude. Nice chat. Mm, I miss you. I'll be back soon. Like, genuinely, oh, we'll be back soon. Cool. Oh yeah, I miss you too. But, okay, bye. He's already left. He was angry that I didn't say I miss him. Oops. Okay. Right, where were we? Where were we? Oops. Heartbroken reinforce. Yeah, the mic did sound a little bit weird. Alright. If Gladiators 4 row charge and rain and somehow sneak their way into playoffs, I will eat my sock. Alright, well we heard it here. Grilled cheese is gonna eat a sock. I don't think that's gonna happen. Just to explain to chat real fast how much of a giga chad super is. Super's actually been really impressive this uh, this stage so far. I've been nicely impressed at how good super is. His Ryan's been good. He's intelligent. Keeps track of other people's ults pretty well. Um, yeah. He's uh The desk told me he's a feeder. Oh, I think what they were trying to, I think that uh, that super bad thing was, um, well, first of all, just a joke, but also just trying to highlight that the stats are really good for Smurf, but the performance has actually looked better when super's been in. I think the reason they run Smurf is because he seems to be more comfortable on Wrecking Ball and uh, Orisa. Might be wrong with that, but... Seems to be the reason to me. Anyway, where are we up to here? So, Spark on the offense. Godspeed's been pushed off high ground. Sandbar used. Not really able to follow up at all with that. And Raw's able to bubble. Uh, a strange use of ultimates there from the Gladiators and the Spark. Both teams using Graph Bomb combo, but neither of them actually syncing it up very well. And neither Primal getting much work done either. Although I suppose Raw's actually getting much more done than uh, Gusuo did. Okay, let's actually pay attention now. No, he hasn't. Don't lie. Watch his positioning and wield old timings. On who? On Super? Wait, who are you talking about? I think Super's definitely been playing better than Smurf. What are you guys talking about? Do you guys really think that Super's been playing badly? Who was... Yeah. Oh. Super's Ryan is very good, his other tanks are not. I mean, the only one that he plays consistently is Winston, and not even that much, honestly. But he occasionally plays it. I mean, what maps have we even seen him play Winston on? Uh, he doesn't play Control. Pretty much. Right, so it's normally Smurf that plays control, so I mean Volskaya and Numbani. But on Volskaya, I'm pretty sure both teams just played Ryan most of the time as well, didn't they? I thought when they played against Titans, Super was on Ryan like most of the time. Look at 
I haven't really noticed much about Supers Ryan. I don't think I can really have that strong an opinion about it because I haven't really been paying too much attention. He's been playing so much... Uh, sorry, Winston. He's been playing so much Reinhardt that uh, I haven't been paying attention to his Winston that much. Yeah, this is also weird. This, uh, this clip... This clip... I think Sleepy deleted it from his channel or something as well, right? And, like, someone made a different clip or something like that. Why do people think this is about Violet? That's... Said nope, said nope, my kill now. That's, 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 that's. Is Violet on the other team or something? Nope, my kill now. That's, 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 that's. You get more damage than the others in Yara. That's, that's, that's. You're better. You're better. Don't you're just a better player. You died four times as much, but you got more damage. You're better. Does he say anything about Violet? It sounds like he's taking the piss out of people saying that people who get more damage are better. Like, it sounds like he's throwing shade at people saying Violet's better. But it doesn't sound like he's throwing shade at Violet. It depends what the context of the clip was, because I think someone in the Reddit thread also said that he was, like, uh, complaining about being benched or something. Alright, let's, let's... We are now detectives. He's changing his crosshair. Get him off. Get him out. It's unacceptable. I will say as well that I think Violet got caught out a huge amount in their game against the Titans. And I don't think that Sleepy would have been caught out that much. But I think Violet has way more clutch potential than Sleepy does. And actually pounds. Violet's got more potential. Just in general. But Sleepy plays a... Uh, Far less of a risky playstyle, and was way more in, in sync with the team. There were about five or six fights over the course of the match that Viola just lost by being out of sync. But I think he's a good choice for them moving forwards. I think that can't, will, uh, you know, that kind of experience will come with time. Okay, so, so far, absolutely nothing. Stats, 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 stats. You get more damage than the others in Yara. Stats, 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 you're better. You're better, don't You're just a better player. You died four times as much, but you got more damage. You're better. No one can I don't think there's... Oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait. I'm coming. I'm an SMG Andy. Oh, fuck. I don't think there's anything to uh, really get up in arms about that. Now, having said that, I did, uh, when I did a video about the shock, I did say that I think you should keep an eye on Sleepy because I'm pretty sure he he went mad on Twitter about not being picked for the USA roster and I could definitely, and he does sound salty there even though it's not really throwing shade at Violet, I don't think I mean maybe it is, but it's not overt and uh, so yeah, he was mad pissed about not being picked for Overwatch World Cup and I think he is the kind of person that actually thinks pretty highly of himself and is gonna struggle being on the bench. So, if he doesn't like being on the bench, I could definitely see him being traded. Yeah. I think that's 
one of the big problems with having a 12-man roster is people getting uh, getting bitchy when they're on the bench. Um, but Baby Bay is perfectly fine with that. I think even Rascal will be fine, and they're actually rotating him in. Um, it looks like they, they do want to make use of him and Striker, and they will do in different methods moving forwards as well. Then who else do they have? I mean, they're making use of Smurf. I don't know. It's only really Sleepy that bothers me. I mean, obviously Rascal is a potential issue as well because he's uh, had those issues in the past. London and Dallas, but I think they can fix that problem. I don't think they can necessarily fix the Sleepy problem. So if he's acting like a little bitch, and I'm not saying that he is in that clip, but if he is acting like a little bitch on the bench of shock, then they should probably trade him. Because an atmosphere that uh, ends up being negative like that is a terrible thing for a team. Send him to Houston? Well, you don't want Raucus back in return though, do you? You just want a fat pay check, so it wouldn't so much be a trade, it would just be selling him to Houston, but yeah, I agree that that would be great for Houston. And also, it's the kind of team that Shot can sell him to and not really be bo bothered about like Houston suddenly getting really good. I'm not even sure that Sleepy would want to go to Houston, though. Most of Shock seem like toxic turds to me. I don't think they are. I've hung out with a number of the Shock guys, and I actually found them pretty, uh, pretty fun to hang out with. I think Super's fucking awesome to hang out with. Who else? Who else do I hang out with a lot on that team? Uh, da, 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 da. Why can't I think? Baby Bay. <laughs> Baby Bay is actually pretty cool to hang out with. He's got a a strange, like, Chad vibe about him. Like, in the nicest way, he's got like a bit of a like a, I don't know what's the right like a bit of like a a rich boy twat vibe about him, but he's super nice. I don't know. You know what I mean though? Like he's actually really lovely. But you would instantly get the impression, I think, that he was like a bit full of himself, but I don't think he actually is. Yeah, like a frat boy kind of vibe. Yeah, I guess that's that's what I'm on about. He's like Tanner, except he's actually playing video games and is really nice. Um, and then, yeah, some of the uh, the other guys are lovely as well. Also, just Krusty and their coaches are a lot of fun to hang out with, too. Who's, how is Krusty's English? Krusty's English is pretty good. And he's also fucking funny. He's actually, I, I, I think I only hung out with him two or three times last year, but fuck me, I loved every night of it. He was so funny. Like he just doesn't really have like a filter and he doesn't, he doesn't have like a PR speak. So we were just asking him like, oh, like uh, what happened? We asked him about what happened with Boston and he just told us everything. And then uh, we were like, Asking him what he thinks of like other teams, <laughs> and if he thinks someone's good, he's like, "Oh yeah, they're sick. They're absolutely sick." They're like, blah, blah, blah. and if he thinks they're shit, they're like, he just starts laughing. <laughs> they're like, "Oh, what do you think about? I don't know who was crap last season or something, uh, Dallas or whatever." Like, "Oh, what do you what do you think about Dallas?" And he just start laughing. <laughs> he's like, "They're so bad." <laughs> he's fucking awesome. I think Krusty, that's number one on the NA ladder, is an alt of Choyobins, maybe? Or maybe it's Strikers, I'm not sure. Krusty's such a fucking... a meme as well, but he's so funny. And we, uh, we chatted with Krusty a bit when we did the California Cup stuff. <laughs> when we were designing the Church of Krusty. 
Okay, I'm not paying any attention to these games. Oh, it's Striker. Okay, not not sure. What do you think of Sinatra? Sinatra is pretty quiet. I haven't really talked with Sinatra that much. He kind of keeps to himself a little bit. But he seems all right. I like Sinatra's um, spice and confidence, you know. He's an interesting personality. Soon? Ooh, Void got caught up top. He's gonna get demacked. He bought time for Rob, but Rob's just discarded and killed anyway. Okay. Three minutes twenty five to get a single tick. Both teams playing Rinse and Goats. Take control of high ground. Play a little aggressive, try and isolate somebody. Okay, that didn't do anything for Gusha. Bazzi could easily die there. Some right clicks from Decay, gonna do huge damage. Okay, they just back up. Decay only at 40%. Actually, didn't land as much damage in that fight as I thought he would. Godsby's got high ground. Trying to go aggressive. Raw got bashed. Ends up going down. Yeah. Unluck. They just went way too aggro there. Way too aggro. I, I thought they were going to try and... I thought what they were trying to do here was push people out. I thought they were just going to try and go a little aggressive and then turn on to Godsby. Just like push the rest of Spark out and then go on Godsby instead. But Raw goes in and then gets booped backwards by Rhea. So he's like mega deep. And then he just gets bashed and killed. And there's nothing you can do about that. But it's nice from Rhea. What do you think of Emily Tang? I think she's a great addition to the team. I think uh, finding people that were insiders that could speak Mandarin and Korean is a massive asset to the team. And Emily's got TV experience. I think she used to do, was it NBA stuff? NBA interviews or something? Or uh, maybe it was something else, some other TV interviews in LA. I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, she's good. NBA and red carpet. What does red carpet mean? Is that just generic red carpet interviews? Or is there a TV show called Red Carpet in America or something? Oh, I see, I see. Alright, let's have a look. So Gladiators could still win this map and bring it back. If they had show for it, they could still be playing a lot of um, Sombra Goats here, which I think would be pretty good. But I don't anticipate them actually doing that much at all. A lot of prioritization on the high ground here. But he ends up dying though. That was kind of strange. Spike didn't leave the tiny little tunnel even when gladiators uh, kind of flanked them and got around them so then they were just taking damage from three different directions and just got trapped in there no I haven't seen these maps before do I think Showforce Brig would help? maybe uh, but I don't know how good Showforce would be on Brig I, I feel like Showforce would probably be pretty good on Brig but I also don't think that hydration's that bad. I think hydration makes a number of pretty smart plays on Brigitte. But I just think that their teamwork, like the speed at which they all react to things, is very slow on gladiators. And raw is a big weakness for them, I think. 
of all of their players, I think Roar is the weakest. Although Void hasn't been great either. Okay. What tools do they have to work with? Decay had his ult up earlier. They can take control of top. Sure, turn around. Grav comes in. Trance is forced. Big Goose again gets punished. Goose is really getting punished a lot. Like, as much as people talk shit about Cruz in that game against Atlanta, Goose has been punished way more than Cruz was in, like, many matches. And people still big up uh, Big Goose. Like, he has a very playmaker-y playstyle, but it's getting red pretty hard by a lot of these teams. Really nice execution. Ooh, actually, a little bit too slow. But still able to come out with the kills. Decay saved both of his bubbles to be able to survive that. The graph. He kept roaring himself alive. Even though Roar got pinned. Ah! Let's, uh, let's look at that one again, actually. I feel like there could be something interesting in there. Hmm, yeah. It's, no, it's just the timing is slightly off from Gusu. You wanna you wanna do that pin a little earlier, but you can see here that um, also Big Goose gets just fucking blasted out of that. How does he get blasted out of that so much? Does he get whip shot or some shit? And just flies away. I don't know how the fuck. It, oh, he must have been booted by IDK surely. Yeah, it must have been booted by IDK. Yeah. But uh, if Gusha is slightly sl uh, slightly later with his pin, Raw's bubble is going to break as soon as he pins him into this wall, but Raw has time to turn around and shield himself. So Raw needs the bubble in order to you know, survive the pin and like be able to uh, maybe keep him alive. But the fact that Gusha gets the pin and Raw still has time to be able to turn around and shield keeps him alive and is that gladiators can kind of survive. But it's a good earth shatter afterwards from Gusha. I think Big Goose is the caller on this team. But I don't think Big Goose calls everything, so I don't know who does the rest of the calls. I think Shofor's a very quiet guy, though. I, I don't think Shofor does the calling. I think he's just pretty intelligent. But I do think that Shofor probably communicates some stuff that Decay doesn't. Because they do look more disjointed when they're playing with Decay. That's pretty nice. From Spark, goes be built out of super fast. But okay, this is the fight that Gladiators can win. This should be them taking point A. They can go in, trade Transcendences and then grab. Or they can grab and just use a later Transcendence and try and win the fight that way. They need to watch out for Shatters. If Gushua gets a better end of Raw, that will be disastrous for them. Big Goose getting pressured again. They had to use their armor pack on Big Goose. Okay, Grav comes out. But it's on the high ground. There's no chance of a follow-up. That's a poor Grav from Gladiators. Opportunity for a Shatter, but it gets whiffed. Gushua backs up. But it's a nice bash. Attempt at a bash Shatter there, actually, from... Uh, Bezzy and uh, Gusha. Yeah. Gladiators just whiffed their ults. I think that was pretty poor from them. Looking pretty uncoordinated. Like, they don't... Big Goose gets punished when he goes for the boop, 
and Void never goes for a boop to try and get people onto low ground. They don't find a good grav. The bomb isn't available. I don't know. Not great. Does Decay make up for what he lacks in communication compared to Shofar? Sure I think Decay is definitely the better Zarya, but they just look worse as a team. It's more important to have good teamwork than a great Zarya in this meta. That doesn't mean I think they should put Shofar back in. I think they should try and work on their teamwork with with this six-man lineup. This six-man lineup is individually their, their best lineup, but I mean, I don't know. I think you would have to know more about the players to be able to fix Gladiators. I think you'd have to listen to their team comms and see what's going wrong in these situations. Like what? I don't know. Yeah, my power rankings are not updated at the moment, Kevin Martin Green. Uh, because I haven't watched all of the games from week 3 yet, but I'm going to do some power rankings on Wednesday after I've watched all the games from this week. So tomorrow, yeah. So in about 24 hours, I'll be doing my power rankings. Uh, Bishu definitely isn't their old tracker. Big Goose is definitely their old tracker. But you need to do way more than just track alts and goats. So this is their Symmetra strat just to take high ground. But normally they take right side high ground. Okay, they just push people out. This is just Sparks. Spark have done this a couple of times. This is just their way of making sure that they deny high ground from the aggressive team. Aggression on Raw, but they don't disengage properly, which I don't know why. It's weird how clean their disengages looked when they played against Shock and how poopy they look now. I don't have any idea what's up with Bishu's health. I think he tweeted today saying that he was alright, but wasn't going to play in this stage because he hadn't yet. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Nobody else was really close. I'm surprised he didn't try and go for a pin. If he went for a... Oh, fuck. If he went for a pin that went through here onto that and just took a bubble from Godspeed... He could have got the kill when he was over here, so he's not really, like, as vulnerable for as long. He could have, like, I think he probably could have pinned the Ryan into the team, and then they could have finished off Raw, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That seemed like a good opportunity to go for something like that. Like, why would you hide here and shatter their front line if you don't think you can pin and follow up? Oh, he already gets the bubble really early. Why does he get the bubble this early? If he gets the bubble now instead, if he gets the bubble now, he can go for a pin. But if he goes for a pin now, he's just going to get booped out of the way. I guess, yeah, he's just going to get bashed out of the pin anyway, isn't he? But yeah, that's why you, you put the, ba the bubble. Like, you should have the bubble, like, now. Or just a little bit before then. Like, the bubble should be now. Like, a, a bubble now will stop a bash or a boop, and then he can pin Decay or Raw into the rest of the team. But I guess because the bubble was so early, he knew that he couldn't go for it. Don't know. Oh, his charge was on cooldown? Was it really? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, his charge was on cooldown. Oh, he went for it as well. Like, he goes for charge there. That's him going into the charge animation as soon as it gets off cooldown. But the bubble was not the right time. And yeah, I think he probably did Shatter too early as well. Like, if he's a bit more patient, he can probably find someone in the back line there. And then he'll have his pin off cooldown. So, yeah. Yeah. Swing through that, get some with the 
I've not been impressed by Void. He doesn't peel for Raw very well. He doesn't boot people off high ground that consistently. And his self-destructs have been late when they've been trying to use defensively. So... And he gets demeked at the beginning of fights quite consistently. I don't mean that. Obviously, this fight was already lost. But uh, on Volskaya and on... Can't remember where else, but Hollywood as well, I think. Okay. Gusra versus No Smite. I think Gusra. They seem more decisive when they play with Gusra. And also, I think he is the better Winston of the two. The backline does speak Finnish, yes, but they also speak English. Yeah, I caught this interview. <laughs> so, uh, can you maybe explain to us, you know, what was the motivation behind that? Listen, I'm sure it's worth telling you. Yeah, he basically says, like, they fixed some comms, right? Uh, so, in the past, um, there were some... Uh, communication issues and when Gusha would get nervous sometimes he might not be able to hear what the other players are saying in Korean but he's been working really hard he's been improving his Korean I thought we were told that this team communicated in English So now it's not really a problem now my second question is uh, the spark no that was definitely both of these teams. People definitely said that both Charge and Spark were communicating in English. Because I remember being very confused as to why Spark were coming in English, and people said it was just because uh, both Korean and Chinese people tend to learn English, and Chinese people don't tend to learn Korean. Don't make it seem like I'm the madman for thinking they communicate in English. This was all over everywhere. This was, the casters were saying this, they were saying this on the desk, people were saying this all over Reddit and Twitter and shit. Uh, this, this was well known. But maybe it was all bullshit. Was it all bullshit or did they speak a mixture of English and Korean? I mean, it might be both. Yeah, the cat, the chat is just fucking gaslighting me. It is known. Yeah, maybe it's both, or maybe they changed, or maybe it never was English. I think we need to get to the bottom of this. Need to get to the bottom of this. They'll probably integrate Crystal in future matters that require more projectile DPS, or maybe a Widowmaker. <laughs> 